to say to start the show off, well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to another edition of The Carton Show. They tell me it's Tuesday. Yep. Tuesday. I'm going to go along with that, but after a night of sour diesel, it might be Thursday. Oh. I'm not quite sure. In any event, I'm here, I made it, and I'm sitting, so I should be okay for the next couple hours. That guy right there is Mr. David Jacoby, handsome pants to my left, Super Bowl champion, oh, really, Anthony Aloysius Cologne. He's already having a bad day, by the way. Why is he having a bad day? Because his favorite starting quarterback in Cleveland is oh. now on the practice squad in a little bit. Why? First, let's get you started yeah, with that. a shocker last night, Tuesday morning. Headlines! Wow, it sucks to be a Cincinnati Bengal right about now. <laughs> or does it? Six and six. I tell you who does suck right now. That's the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yes, sir. Who are a game out of being out of the playoffs now because they couldn't stop the Bengals and some guy named Browning who's never played in the NFL before who threw for 900 yards, 17 touchdowns. And the Cincinnati Bengals do the unthinkable with a backup quarterback. They beat the Jacksonville Jaguars, who are now on the outside of the number one seed, looking in, and that window ain't going to open up again. Yeah, I said this yesterday, man. It was a must win for the Jaguars. They fumbled the bag, man. It was tough. I didn't think this Bengals rushing attack would come alive, but it did. And on top of that, Jake Browning, he needed needed some validation after losing to the Steelers. He got it last night. He was money last night. Look, best game, obviously, is a pro for him. You know, you score 34 points. You win the game in overtime. Jamar Chase was great last night. 11 catches above 49. But you have to really be concerned now with two things. A, the Jaguar defense sure. that got shredded by Jake Browning. And, of course, the obvious thing, Jacobs, and that is the injury late to Trevor Lawrence. Right. And while they uh, said the X-rays came back negative, so he didn't break the ankle, the way they're talking about it, he's going to miss time. Whether it's just one game, and they have the Cleveland Browns coming up this weekend, or it's multiple games yeah. for a team that was in control. Of the one seed, had they won out, they're now in danger of possibly not even making the playoffs considering the Houston Texans yeah. are breathing right yeah, down their necks. When you talk about this injury, in we've seen injuries that don't look that bad like Joe Burrow that are really bad. They'll keep you out for a long sure. time. And this one looked really, really bad, especially him walking the tunnel afterwards. It, but he could be out for a extended period of time. Good thing the x-rays are negative. But the implications of last night's game, which didn't seem like a huge game going into it, mm-hmm. are all over the place sure. on both yeah. sides of the ball. And as you said, the Jaguars are closer to not being in the playoffs than the number one seed. And I would thought yesterday afternoon they would be the number one seed this morning. Yeah, by the way, they had that in their control. Had they won out, and their schedule favors them to do that, they could have been the number one seed, had home field advantage, and that first round by. And now they go to Cleveland. And check this out just for a quick second on Jacksonville. So, for the moment, for the moment, yeah. old man Flack goes back on the practice squad. You do the ability three times to take a veteran off the practice squad and make him your starter. So, he's probably going to start. But for the moment, sure. he's now back on the Browns practice squad, right? The Browns are favored right now at home to beat the Jacksonville Jaguars. So you could wake up on Monday and you could have the Houston Texans, they play the Jets, tied for first place with the Jacksonville Jaguars with four games to go. That is a major problem for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And we'll get into it much more, of course, throughout the show today. (laughs) Headline number two, Mike McCarthy, maybe the coach of the year in the NFL. Mike McCarthy said yesterday, Cowboys, Eagles, Eagles, Cowboys, don't you worry about nothing, Cowboy fans. We're going to be ready. Yeah, he's going to be ready because he knows he has them coming home, right? 14 straight home win games for the Cowboys. Dak Prescott is playing out of his mind. His defense is playing really well. And on top of that, Mike is happy, right? He looks like a happy and confident coach. He's like, listen, everything's high in Dallas. We look good. We're flying high. But it really is about the Eagles. How can they recover after such a yeah, hard right. loss it's against the things. Niners? It's the Eagles' recovery from an embarrassing loss yeah. at home to San Francisco. And if I'm Dallas, I go back four weeks. I think I outplayed them in their building. I should have won that game. Sure. And now I get them in my building where I've been dominant. Is there a part of you, if you're a Cowboys fan, that is a little concerned about this game based on what happened against the Niners? Because there's a part of me, like, now you've got, like, a wounded, angry dog coming into your house. Like, it feels like coming off the loss that this Eagles team is going to be ready to prove who they I, really are. I think are. I feel confident because this is Dak's game. Like, yeah, when he plays guys, against the, the Eagles. Then, then you don't know Cowboy fans. <laughs> Jacoby's asking a question that, to me, seems rhetorical, but it's a good question. And you, you couldn't be more wrong. What Sorry, do you pal. mean? 
Cowboy fans are never comfortable. Yeah. Because he should be. Either Dak's going to mess it up, McCarthy's going to make a but bad call. But one quarterback that plays well against the Eagles is who? Dak, Dak Prescott. Prescott. Thank you. I know, but I'm just One thinking, team that always messes it up is who? Listen, I made a career out of talking for fans, all right? <laughs> Cowboy fans are feeling good. But they got to get through Philly before Cowboy fans start yeah. peacocking. And then they get really annoying. And then, like, you ride a New York subway, which I refuse to do these days, <laughs> and half the subway cars got Cowboy gear yeah, on. Seriously. They're a game away from being really obnoxious, and I welcome it. What a, a game, game it's going to be. Because what's better than an obnoxious Cowboy fan who's poised for disappointment? The disappointment oh, is right? bigger if you don't expect it to come. Right. All uh, right, listen, we got lots cooking, uh, and there is still one dysfunctional friend. How are we here? Football, and that, of course, is We're my doing beloved this? New York Jets. Something came out yesterday. We're doing this? That is Real? so unbelievable. I'm not even sure if it's true regarding Zach Wilson and the allegations that he doesn't want to play anymore. <laughs> we'll get wait. into it. I talked to Coach last night. Hi, right, welcome back to the Carton Show. I cannot believe we're bringing the Jets up, but we have to because this is, at least on the service, dysfunction yep. at its very, very best. So the report comes out yesterday that the New York Jets had decided that Boyle's not the answer, Trevor Simeon's not the answer. With a few games left this year, we're going to go back to Zach Wilson because of the three quarterbacks we got, let's be honest, he gives us the best chance to win. The story then was put out there that sources among the Jets said, Zach Wilson told Robert Sala he doesn't want to play. Yeah. Or at least he intimated to his teammates that he's reluctant to get back on the field. Robert Sala addressed those rumors at a press conference yesterday. Listen to this. If he was reluctant to play, guys, he wouldn't be here. All right. Uh, I actually, coincidentally, just got done speaking with him. Uh, he came in about a half hour ago, and we had a really good conversation. The young man wants the ball. He wants to start. He believes he's the best uh, quarterback in the room and best quarterback for this team and the best and the guy who gives us the best chance to win. Um, and I'll tell you guys the same thing I told him. I appreciate it. I appreciate the fact that he wants to play. I'm just not there yet. Yeah, and that's fair. And that's honest. That's as honest as you're going to hear a coach yeah. at a press conference. So uh, let me walk you through what is factual. Zach Wilson, unannounced, went to Robert Saw's office yesterday and said, I want to play. Please give me the ball. I believe I'm the best quarterback we have on this roster. At no point did he intimate or directly say to any member of the coaching staff or the general manager, I'd rather not go back in the game because I'm afraid of being injured. There's also a notion out there that he said he didn't want to play and that Aaron Rodgers called him and convinced him he was making a mistake. He did speak to Aaron Rodgers, but it wasn't about that. Right. At no point. Did Zach Wilson ever tell anybody of importance that he does not want to play or is reluctant to get back on the field? Number two, I spoke to Robert Sala last night. If Zach Wilson had gone to anybody with the New York Jets and said, I'd rather not play because I'm concerned about getting injured or whatever the nonsense story that was out there, he would have been cut on the spot. He would not be a New York Jet today. So where are we? We got bad rumors circulating about Zach Wilson. And then there's this reality. He is the best quarterback yep. yeah, on the New York that's... Jets, which, of course, is akin to being the tallest dwarf in the circus. <laughs> Who really cares? But he is the best quarterback. He does give them the best option. And what's fascinating about this story is that everyone bought into it without anybody checking. And I'm not suggesting the reporters invented it. I'm sure someone on the team, you know, uh, spoke to them and said, hey, this is what I'm hearing. So I'm not attacking the credibility of the report. I've been a, a beat reporter. I know what it's like. People question your sources. This one, though, has been outright denied by all the people involved. Zach Wilson and Robert Sala, yeah. right? So we can put that to bed, I hope, at this point. But here's what's really interesting. The Jets know that Zach Wilson right now gives them the best chance to win. I would suggest they lose out because it gives us a better chance of getting a future quarterback. But how about the fact that here we are on Tuesday and they're not sure if they're going to play him, meaning they know he's the best quarterback, but they're not committed to putting him back on the field. Yeah, the bottom line is if the, narr if the narrative is true, do you blame him for not wanting to go back out I there? I do. It, it, it's, it ends his career, and that's another reason why I thought the story was BS when I first heard it. If you're an embattled young quarterback, yep. 
that a lot of people view as one of the worst quarterbacks in the NFL, maybe of all time, right? Who's been given all this rope mm. to prove that you're an NFL quarterback. And while, yes, you've made some strides and all that stuff, you know, you basically have the worst offense in football history, sure. right? If it came out, and it was factual, that you told the team, I'd rather not play, your career ends that day. Because what other franchise is going to ever take a flyer on you when you're the guy that said, I'd rather not play? So think about it from that standpoint. 25-year-old kid, competitive kid, yep. who wants to be on the field, right? That kid's going to go to a coach and say, I'd rather not play? Like, it just doesn't make any sense at any level. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, I mean, there's a part of me that when the story came out, I was just like, oh, what is Zach doing? And the other half, because I watched the whole game last Sunday and how bad the offense looked in totality, and considering that Zach Wilson is up at the end of the season, part of me was like, thought about business. Like, hey, man, why would I go out there and get hurt when I'm literally going to go out in the spring, in the summertime, and fight for a new job? And why I'm already behind the eight ball because of my reputation. So I understood it from a business standpoint, but I totally agree with you. You can't do it because of what the Jets have done. Well, like, everything far. I know about you as a player, yes. you would never have accepted a guy yeah. in your locker room who told the coach, I get that. I'm reluctant I'm to play. I'm 100%. Right? I'm just talking about if I was Zach Wilson's agent. Yeah. And I had to pull him like, listen, kid, get out of this game. It's over. The Jets are over on a new pasture. I'm just talking if I was his agent, that's how I would talk. I, I get As that. a teammate, I totally agree with you. If you're a college player about to be drafted and you don't play in a bowl game, I can totally understand that because that injury risk can really take uh, By the way, place I can't, other. but I, I get your point. Yeah, we'll move on. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but in this particular case, you are a Zach Wilson-level quarterback. You're auditioning to the rest of the league to True. be a backup next year. Sure. You don't have that many opportunities to put stuff on tape that gets you that job. And if you're wearing the uniform, you're cashing the paychecks, and I understand why they went to Tim Boyle. I understand why they went from Boyle to Simeon. True. And yeah. I understand now why they want to go back to Wilson. It just makes football sense. But there's also sense. this narrative that you can't go back. You can, you can totally you go can back go to back. Zach Wilson. Yeah, why like not? A lot of people was like, oh, you, how could you go back? You bench him. Because like, we saw the other options. Game of chat. 100%. Yeah, yeah and 100%. I'll do you one better. I got a chance to watch the, what they call the All-22 film yesterday. It's basically a bird's eye view. So you can see every yeah. player on the field at once, for those of you that never heard of it before. There were six plays. In the last Jet game, where Tim Boyle had guys wide oh, open, no joke for touchdowns, six. Seriously. And if I even say one of them, maybe the guy would have been tackled. There were five explosive play opportunities where guys would have scored touchdowns, three of them to Garrett Wilson, and Tim Boyle couldn't pull the trigger and throw the ball. He's dead. Why is he here? Because Aaron Rodgers is the de facto GM, and Aaron Rodgers brought him here as a security blanket for him and to do a friend of solid, which I totally respect and understand the loyalty in sports. But this is crazy. And if you're the Jets, you're like, you know, now i got to have a press conference to answer rumors that aren't well, true. Well, not even that. Think about big picture. If Aaron Rodgers gets hurt again and Zach Wilson's out the building, like, you still have Tim Boyle there. Like, no. at, some, at some point. Next year? You gotta, no, Boyle will not be here. No. You, got, you have to clean house. Uh, yes. Listen, Boyle yes. will not be here next year. There's a chance Zach's not here Zach next won't year. Zach well, won't, won't be there. Well, don't Zach Simeon won't be there. Zach a four-year guaranteed contract as a first-round draft pick. But he probably won't be here next year. There will be a veteran backup behind Aaron Rodgers next year. You can book that for sure. But I want to get that dysfunction out of the way early today because I'm in a fantastic mood. And I don't want to talk about negative things or dysfunction or bad teams. So we'll only do it two more times today. And then we'll be, and then, and then we'll be all good. Listen, we got great content coming your way. Oh. First, the football's on the flip. And that includes the Packers talking smack, C.J. Stroud getting emotional, and A.J. Brown acknowledging that he was boo -hoo -hoo, very <laughs> upset after the loss to San Francisco as he gets ready for the Dallas Cowboys. Anyhow, good morning to you. Before we get to first in football, quick question for you, fellas. What's up? Who do you think gets the most free chicken cutlets a la vodka right now? Oh. Is it Tommy DeVito, New York Giants starting quarterback, or... Is it Dominic DiNardo, the guy down oh. in Philly, who uh, put his big fat face uh, going uh, in the middle of a game? Yeah, I'm going big, big time. I'm going big time. Breakfast, yeah. lunch, and dinner. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he doesn't have to pay for nothing, nothing. in Philly no more. Oh, no. All right. Oh, no. All right, because I got a little birdie in my ear telling me that last night Tommy DeVito was all about the chicken parm. Yeah. And he was with the guy that I like to call... You! Hey! What? <laughs> I was hanging out with Tommy D. Yeah, I'll get pictures to prove it last night as well yeah. at a charity event here in New York, but we'll get to that later on. Right now, it's first in football with Mr. Jacoby. We start with A.J. Brown. After the big loss to the Niners, he was asked about 
the upcoming game against the Cowboys. Yeah. And he gave us a little perspective about that and uh, life in general. Here is the philosopher, A.J. Brown. You have no choice, you know? I'm moving around and, you know, be sad and be mad at yourself about it. But, you know, we got a big opponent coming up next week in Dallas on the road. You got you to gotta put your big boy pants on, you know? It's life, you know? Everything going to go your way every single time. If you think you're going to go out there and, and just win in life every single time without, without a blow, it's, it's not going to happen like that. It's so, right. Do the Eagles coming off a big loss to the Niners make you feel like it's more likely they upset the Cowboys? No, I don't. I, I think we're going to learn a lot about Philadelphia. They had all those yep. close games that they found out how to win. You know, that's a character kind of issue in a good way. So you want to you know, applaud them for that and give them their flowers for that. But that's a depressed locker room right there. That's A.J. Brown's one of the biggest trash talkers in the sport today and is always happy to you know, gab in front of the cameras. And that seems like a defeated dude. Now, he happens to be right. Life doesn't always go your way, philosopher. Football doesn't always go your way. No one's going to be 17 and 0 this year. Uh, but you got to pull up your big boy pants and get back to work. But that's a different guy because every other game, other than maybe the Jet yeah. game when they lost a month and a half ago, you know, it's a lot of cockiness and arrogance. And you know, we hear everybody complaining and bitching and moaning. And all of a sudden, that's a that's a subdued yeah. eagle locker room. And let's be honest, America. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. We love a subdued <laughs> eagle locker room because it means they're tasting it right yeah. now. Now, they could put it all to rest, go to Dallas, beat the Cowboys. You're guaranteed to now win the division. You're still in the hunt, of course, for the number one seed, depending on what San Francisco does over the last five weeks. But if you lose to the Dallas Cowboys, now you're inviting negativity and criticism into the entire locker room, the coaching staff. So I do think this is a must-win game for the Cowboys if they still have dreams of winning the division and staying alive for, uh, which is really a long shot, to be the number one seed. If you're Philly, you want to get right back on the horse and win. If you do, all is well. Ain't nothing wrong with being 15 and two. Yeah. If you lose, though, you're now looking at the prospects of you've given up home field advantage because San Francisco, of course, has the tiebreaker against you. Yeah, and you're right. and A.J. Brown's right. Like, there's no time to sulk and kind of feel sorry for yourselves. The Niners came in that building looking for his validation solely because Brock Purdy didn't finish the NFC Championship game. And he stepped in that building, and they dominated. You yeah. talk about they weren't able to come back from behind. They had six straight possessions where they were able to score. You talk about going in the red zone, coming up with three twice. And what was crazy about that game overall, A.J. Brown realized, like, they didn't have enough. They didn't have enough in the tank to beat the best team in football. And by the way, you're going to see them again if you plan to be where you need to be. Yep. So I think a lot was answered. Now you got to go to Dallas. You know Dallas sitting back like barbecue chicken, baby. Bring them birds home. And they're, they're hot. They're the hottest team in football. Yeah, I also still question. I'm not sure if anyone in Philly is. I don't work there anymore. But I, I question the mentality and the thought process of having Jalen Hurts playing late in that fourth quarter. Yeah. I'm not saying he got hurt any more than he was hurt. But having gone to the tunnel, maybe a concussion, which obviously he passed protocol. Yep. Maybe the left knee again, which he already has a brace on. Got beat up pretty good. I'm still trying to figure out why they valued that fourth quarter as much as they did. They got nothing to prove to anybody. They went to a Super Bowl last a year. Thing. They got the best record in the NFC. And yet I'm sitting there at home going, I can't believe this dude is in the game. I don't think it helps him one bit for the game against Dallas. And, again, it's more of a must win for the Cowboys. But if Philadelphia loses this game, San Francisco owns it's, the one seed. It's When you watch the Dallas Cowboys go to Philly and lose, in the way that they lost, yeah. you still come away from that feeling like, all right, good matchup. Dak played really played well. Really well yep. You feel a little yeah. bit of confidence in yeah. the Cowboys even in the loss. But if you're the Eagles losing this game, doubt starts to seep in. Like, yeah, they got their already butts doubt, But I'll tell you why. Because that, then what we're all going to do is we're going to go back, right? And we're going to say, damn, they almost lost to the Bills. Man, they almost lost to this team. They almost lost to the Patriots. And, well, you're going to look at a four-game stretch there where a play or two was the difference between them, them in the middle right now of a three-game losing streak, maybe a four-game losing streak, and then being the best team in football. Like the Eagles, it comes down, no joke, like the Dolphin game. Washington, they won. I'm not worried about that game. Yeah. But the Washington game, the Kansas City game, the Buffalo game, you could make the argument that they played poorly enough to lose four out of the last five. Sure. Yeah. So now you go to Dallas, of course. Dallas has revenge. Dallas is playing their best football. If the Cowboys win, 
Eagles are still a really good team, and they're playing playoff football. So no reason to get that twisted. But you could start asking questions, right? We haven't seen this team lose back-to-back games. No, haven't we'll, seen it. We will be. You don't want to see it this time of year, right? Especially when everybody's riding high, especially like the Cowboys. Who's right? more obnoxious? Eagle fans when they're winning or Cowboys, Cowboys fans when they're winning? It's not even close. I don't know. It's not, not even close. Eagle not fans, close. If, you, if, you, uh, if you're a fan of social media and you sit on the toilet and you scroll down, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of Eagle fans prior to that Niner game who were pretty much talking yeah. about Rocky, talking about the history of Philly. I mean, it was Philly, how, Philly, Philly. How much time so, you spent on the toilet? I mean, a lot. Moving on to second I, down. I, 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 All right. That's why he got Netflix. Packers cornerback. <laughs> Keyshawn Nixon spoke, had some high praise for Jordan Love after their big win against the Chiefs. Here's Packers cornerback Keyshawn Nixon. <laughs> man, Terry, good. I told y'all, man, you know what I'm saying? The media talked crazy about him, but he's a hell of a player and he's a competitor. Is that Rubies? I, like, I got here last year. I s- sat and watched him, you know, learn from 12, and uh, 12 gave him the key, and he's driving the Porsche now. All right. That was a big win. Jordan Love has played well lately. Have the Packers solidified their franchise quarterback moving forward? I, look, I think it's probably premature to say that grand scale, but they've got a quarterback for sure. He's their quarterback, and uh, he deserves it. He's played really good football the last couple of weeks, and it looks like the light bulb's gone off. They're a very young team. I think the youngest team on offense yep, in the yep. entire NFL, which is also a valuable lesson for those of you that are fans of teams that are struggling but recognize you have a lot of first year, second year, third year talent. Sometimes it sucks to be patient, but you got to be patient. And I think that's paying off right now for the Green Bay Packers. Very, very young team, young wide receivers, young, inexperienced quarterback. And all of a sudden, it seems like he has started to figure it out. Oh, yeah. Guys are getting open. He's making the right reads. And the Green Bay Packers, for good reason right now, are very much alive for a playoff spot, which a month ago, let's be honest, they were dead and buried. So oh, yeah. you want to give them a lot of credit. I don't want to give LaFleur a lot of credit for not losing faith, for being very consistent. And, of course, Jordan Love's play has gotten them amazingly into the final wild card spot. Yeah, I mean, the bottom line, you talk about the last couple of weeks, he's out, out dueled Patrick Mahomes, out dueled Jared Goff. He's leading his offense down the field. And I think, and I said this yesterday, I think I'm just, I'm impressed with how he starts the game, right? You, you're talking about he's not afraid to pull the trigger. He's throwing the ball deep. He's connecting with Watkins. He's connecting with a lot of those young receivers like Romeo Dobbs and company, Jaden Reed. So I think when you talk about what he's doing, really, he's playing with confidence, right? Yeah, I hate He's it. playing with a guy who has a lot of confidence, who's not afraid to just flat out sling the football all over the field. It looks good. I hate it. I hate it. Why? I hate it. Uh, well, why? Why do I hate it? Why? Because it's just another franchise that has a quarterback. Oh, God. <laughs> like, I, I, I got a quarterback allegedly saying, I don't want to play, which is not true. He <laughs> wants to play. And here's the guy that wants to play, and we don't know if we want him to play. Meanwhile, Green Bay's got another a good quarterback. It, I am so angry about it. <laughs> no, like it, I hate it. Every team out there in America that has a legitimate starting the, quarterback, screw you. Who's the last Jets quarterback that was better than Jordan Love right now? Joe Namath. <laughs> and, and by the way, <laughs> and just to show you how bad it is for us as Jet fans, Joe Namath, Hall of Famer, 69 Super Bowl, more interceptions Man. than touchdowns. Yeah, I'm not saying still not that good. I <laughs> mean, that's a real fact, though. Like, yeah, that's, that's a real that's fact. Real. Yeah. Who yeah. yeah. got a third the down? Because he was good on the Jets. Yeah. Third and football, C.J. Stroud spoke you about suck. the loss of Ugh. his Disgusting. partner and wide receiver, Tank Dell. That is the play in which Dell got injured. Seems to be out for the season. Stroud, unhappy, spoke about it. Try to be positive about it, but it's tough, man. I'm, I'm hurt. Like, I'm, I'm, I can't sugarcoat it. I can't come up here and lie and say, like, oh, we'll be all right. No, nah, it's not, you know. Um, and I love him to death. I told him that. And <laughs> seven, seven and three will be a, a great, a great uh, duo for the next couple of years, man, right when he gets back. Does the loss of Dell put a ceiling on the surprising season for the I, I can't say it puts a ceiling on it, uh, but it certainly hurts because he's a security blanket for a Stroud. Obviously, Stroud yeah. encouraged the Texans to draft him. He was his workout buddy, you know, in the offseason. It was a great story, and you feel terrible for Tank Dell, who is a no-name guy, obviously, coming in this year. And, uh, you know, it's top 15, third-round pick, and he's having a great season, right? Uh, so you feel terrible for him. But I'm not sure if it changes everything dramatically for the Houston Texans because we all believe in the ability of C.J. Stroud. Facts. So next man up, hopefully that guy knows the routes and knows how to get open, and it doesn't change how good Stroud is. But crazy. So, yes, does it hurt to lose a good player? Obviously it does. 
it doesn't change the prospect, I don't think, of them getting in. Yeah, I mean, I respect the, the, the emotions, I guess. I mean, you know, Tank Dell has a hell of a story. Went to Houston. He's a hometown kid playing yeah. for the Texans. I get all that. But, hey, if I'm Nico Collins, what about me? Right? Yeah. I, I've been balling for you. Don't forget about me, homie. What about Damian Pierce, the running back? Ball. You're talking about Robert Woods, who's a hell of a receiver. So, he still has weapons. Like, Tank Dell is good. He's a young, yeah. good young talent. But the season's not over. Like, if I'm not receiver, I'm not going to CJ Stroud do it. Like, hey. You're, you're good, homie. Like, we're, right. we're out here running I'll around. Too. Well, I'll get open, yeah. too. So, relax. Yeah. It's a sad story because the kid's having a great rookie season. Yeah. Their combination, rookie to rookie, is great. All that stuff. So, it hurts. But I don't think it derails what the Texans are doing. I don't think so. Not Moving on to I think, fourth. I you know, the Jets think. <laughs> we'll get back to that. Fourth and football. We got some big Dom content, guys. Nick Sirianni spoke about this skirmish, this back and forth between Greenlaw and Big Dom. And here's what Sirianni had to say. I'm so thankful for him. You know, his, his natural, he's going to always um, to try to defuse situations, right? That's, that's what he does. That's his job. Um, and so... You know, obviously unfortunate yesterday, but, you know, I, I know it in Dom's heart. He truly was trying to defuse the situation <laughs> right there. Um, I'm sad that it, it came to, you know, what it came to that anybody got thrown out of the game. Willie, you're our senior situation yeah. reporter. Um, it, was he defusing the situation? It didn't look like it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there was just no reason for him to do anything. Like, that's not your job. You're, you got to say, the head of security on most teams, they kind of like the consigliere of right. the head coach. Like, they, they are the guy who's, who's really kind of like the right hand to the head coach. Look where Nick Sirianni is. He's not involved in that, right? No. And he's the coach. Everybody on that sideline stayed away from that besides Big Dog. Yeah. The other thing is that we're showing you the second part of it. The first part of it, which should be shown, is that as the play comes it's to there. the sideline, it's Dominic that invokes himself yes. into the situation, and he makes first physical contact with the green law, not the other way around. The NFL is going to suspend him from the sideline because you have to for player safety. Now, he doesn't mean anybody harm. No. He's been there for 25 yeah, he's years. Yeah. He's a good <laughs> yeah. guy. He's Everybody in Philly loves him. He's never going to buy another meal and all that stuff. But the NFL has to make a stand here, even though I think they recognize – if that's the first time in 25 years that guy has done that, maybe you give him a little pass. Sure. But for the San Francisco side, you can't. It costs him green law. There yeah. you go. Yeah, it costs him an all-pro linebacker in the biggest game of the year. So, again, we'll probably make it too big a deal out of it anyway. But I do believe the NFL is going to ban him from the sideline, if not for the rest of the year, for a certain amount of time because yeah, they have to. But now the celebrity, like he picked up Shaq Leonard, who the, uh, the Eagles yep. just acquired. Guess who's on the front page? Big Don. Big Don. Right. Walking yeah. Shaq Leonard through the airport. Like, nobody knew who the hell Big Don was until Sunday. Look, dude's been there 25 years. I like this stuff. <laughs> I love this kind of stuff. Little yeah. characters like Steve Bartman. The little characters just come out of nowhere. And by the way, every team has one of those guys. Yeah. You know that. Yeah. Every team's got a Dom. And they usually stay in the background. They're like the Way Passat. in the back, though. Yeah, yeah they got an <laughs> earpiece in. And they kind of watch from the back like, yeah. oh, I think he's going to make a move. <laughs> <laughs> like that kind of thing. Uh, the fact is that... He's a big fella with a big head, and he's easy to Italian, recognize. His name is Dom. He's in Philly. Yeah, Look at all the work. Forget but Car about but it. Carter's 100 percent right. All those guys are in the back. Yeah, like they don't even like yeah. you. Like they look like Jack from 24. They yeah. have the earpiece. They're waiting for little little calls, but they're not. And involved. let me tell you what those all. guys are there for. Just real quick. Why does the guy? Yeah, there's no reason for him to be next to the coach no. during a game. They escort the coach across the field yes. after games. That's all good. Most of these guys, I'm not sure if Dominic is, are either retired police or FBI, yes. one of those guys. And those are the guys that give every player a card at the start of the season. And that card is, if you do something stupid. In case of an emergency. Yeah. Call me first. Yes. I can probably help you out. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what Dominic does for the Eagles. And he's Mine done just it. happened to be a gold card. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they gave yeah, you three. Extra protection. Uh, <laughs> listen, we got much more coming your way. They tell me that Plaxico Burris is going to hey, jump what? What? Yeah, in about 20 minutes. And as we get ready for the next biggest game of the year, Dallas and Philly, are we ready to give credit to Mike McCarthy? The credit the big fella deserves. We'll discuss it right after this. All right, getting ready for the next biggest game of yeah. the decade. Game of the year. Philadelphia yeah. going to Dallas Cowboys and Eagles. First place in the division, up for grabs, and Stephen Jones, often referred to in our pre-show meetings as Son of Jerry, 
kind of like, you know, Kalel is the son of Ural, uh, spoke about, so, you can Google it, <laughs> spoke about Mike no McCarthy and the about. great job he's doing <laughs> with Dak Prescott. Kneel before Zod. Right. Ben showing. Let's see. Let's have the thumb. Uh-huh. Mike's been able to clean up some of the Ooh, things that, uh, you know, if people were to be critical of Dak, which is hard to do because, they're, you know, for the most part, he's played at a high level uh, from uh, the day he walked in the league as a rookie. But I do believe some of the things we're doing has cleaned up, uh, you know, some of the uh, interceptions, which we all know how critical turnovers are. Uh, when it comes to winning a football game. And certainly Dak's cleaned that up. Yeah, it's funny. I'm not sure if Mike McCarthy plays a role in that or if it's time to give Dak credit for not making bad passes, dumb passes, questionable passes that lead to turnovers. Famously, he led the league last year in interceptions, only played, what, 12 games. And this year, he's been really good with ball control. But to me, Mike McCarthy was also the coach last year. So, well, the, who gets credit for Well, it's it? different this year because what Mike McCarthy has been able to do, he has implemented quick return motion, right? So, what that is, it allows Dak to get matchup advantages, especially versus man coverage. So, now the decision maker for uh, Dak is a lot quicker. That's why you see him getting the ball out really fast, and he knows where he's so going. So, let me ask you this. Eight, is eight how much of this is simply, well, the biggest difference in the Cowboys this year is the fact that Mike McCarthy's calling plays, Kellen Moore is in L.A. Period. Stop. End the conversation right there. Mike gets credit because everything else is the same. The only difference is who's in Dak's year pre-snap. I think what happened is it, they've simplified it for Dak. Right? There's now getting the ball out on time, getting to the open with the the, the advantage, the man-to-man advantage he feels like he has, and overall. This offensive line it has gotten healthy. We don't talk about early in the season. This Dallas offensive line was banged up. Right. Now those guys are healthy, and they're starting to protect Dak a little better. And on top of that, Dak's using his legs, so he's able to extend plays. So all that's starting to come into fruition at the same time, and they're playing really well. Yeah, and look, and he's playing his ass off. And here's yeah. a guy in the regular season that's won 12 games. It was a 16-game season multiple times. Yeah. And we've kind of, I think at times, gotten a little lazy in the criticism of Dak Prescott only because he's the Cowboy quarterback. Now, look, last year you led the league in interceptions. That's a tangible stat. Mm -hmm. You got to own that one and live up to it, right? This year, you saw the numbers. He has thrown a few interceptions, but nowhere near the league leaders. No, and I think what Dak is doing, he's seeing the whole field. And listen, on top of that, there's there's some why, I don't know why this is a narrative, but it's like anytime a quarterback has a lot of weapons, that's a knock against him, right? Especially when you think well, about Well, only if you're Plaxico Burris <laughs> talking about Brock Purdy. Well, right, but like <laughs> even people was like, well, you know, he, he has CD, he has this guy. I'm like, all right, those are the guys on his roster. He's getting them the ball. He's getting the ball on time. Like I told you, the Seahawks game, the best throw he did was an incomplete pass to CD Lamb, and it was three people on. CD and it actually hit CD in the hams. Yeah. So like he's playing out of his mind right now. He doesn't get enough credit. Did you just say hit him in the hams? Hands. Sorry, oh, hands. Because I'm the, hungry too. But the, yeah. I, I didn't have breakfast. I didn't have breakfast. Yeah. yeah. All right. In any event, uh, much more on Dallas and Philly as we get closer and closer. By the way, when are we going to stop saying it's the biggest game of the year? No, game of the week, game well, of the year, game of the we're decade. Never stop we got to keep never, saying it. No, until next we week. Five more games. We got to say Then we got Dolphins, Ravens coming yeah. up later. Yeah. What's the biggest game yeah, of the year? We have Chiefs, Bills, yeah. which I think is the biggest dry, game yeah. of the year. Yeah. Like every week, we're like, this is the biggest game. game That's what we do. Year. But when they're on Fox, you got to hype it up. When they're on Fox, they're the biggest game of the year. Yeah, 25 on Fox, America's game of the week. That's the biggest game. Every year. Yes. You're right. Even You're right. Indy? What? No. <laughs> All right. Time now for everybody. They tell me it's everyone's favorite. I guess uh, you enjoy it. Called Yeah, <laughs> but uh, we start you we start off with Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, Patrick Mahomes is a great quarterback. And yeah, the rhetoric is out there. He's never won a road playoff game. But he's never lost one either. Facts. So why are we concerned about the Kansas City Chiefs? Almost a lock now at some point in the playoffs, if they win early, having to take that show on the road and winning a road playoff game now that they have four losses and they're chasing Miami and Baltimore. Yeah, because the lack of production from his receiving core and pretty much he got outplayed by Jordan Love the other night. Yep. Yeah. That's the bottom line. So, yeah, if he has to go on the road and he has to go against a, a better quarterback than Jordan Love, it may be trouble in the world. He's been outplayed by a lot of quarterbacks this year, and we also regard him as the best quarterback in football, rightfully so. But there have been a lot of games this year when you go into the game going, all right, Kansas City's got the quarterback edge. And on the flip side, you're like, 
He got outplayed. Yeah. I hate to bring up the Jets, but one of them might be Zach Wilson. By the way, statistically, yes. <laughs> yes. 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 That wise. Yes. <laughs> but it's like, but a little concerned about going on the road. They pump your face. They didn't look good. <laughs> is, is, we all talked about the Chiefs defense. Remember, that, remember part of the season we were celebrating the Chiefs defense? They did yeah. not look good in Lambeau. No. They did not look good in Lambeau. And, and Mahomes does not throw the ball down the field anymore. He does not throw the ball down the field. And he'll do it once or twice a game to yeah. MBS. It'll be incomplete. And that's just the way that their offense I, runs I'll now. give you one better. They had a lot of injuries that game. It was guys dropping like flies. Oh, yeah. So you're talking about this time of year where you need guys to get healthy fast. It doesn't look good for the Chiefs uh, when yeah, it comes to the went down. Yeah, he went Let's down also for a bit. just top of your head. I'm not, I'm not putting you on the spot because I'll ask myself the same question. When's the last time you're like, man, that Travis Kelsey is awesome? Right? Uh, he had fair. three catches last weekend. He had, he had a two touchdown yeah. game against. against been a bit. Uh, been a bit. Uh, Taylor Swift was there. <laughs> right? But Craig's point, like, it's he hasn't been. popped off the tape like you normally do. Yeah. It's either a drop or a miss, uh, you know. Yeah, he had like 88 yards in the last he, game. He used to be money for eight catches, 120 yeah. yards, couple touchdowns, Not big third down He was monster in the red zone. Somebody might yes. ask the question. Are you committed to being an NFL football player while you know traveling around the globe with your girlfriend? Uh, but Craig, I mean, Craig there you go. There, man, now we're doing sports. The media. man has said I'm 34 years old, and I think about retirement all the time. People might ask the question. I'm just saying. People might ask the question. I'm just saying. Right. He, he looked pretty good there, the last game. To be honest, I think. Listen, he looked okay. He the best like flex three, move that Kelsey plus yard pulled catches. all year was not on the football field. He was trying to keep up with the Swifties and buying an eight million dollar house so he could impress her. Because she ain't living in no shack, I'll no tell you that right now. <laughs> All right, in any event, uh, number two. Yeah, the Buffalo Bills are on the outside looking in. Oh, like and yeah, Josh Allen hasn't been great. What? And yeah, the Bills fired Ken Dorsey, their offensive coordinator. But the three teams directly ahead of the Buffalo Bills have Joe Flacco, Mitchell Trubisky, and Minshew as their starting quarterbacks. Buffalo's going to be just fine. Yeah, don't sleep on Minshew. Obviously had a big game uh, against the Tennessee Titans. Actually did well with MJP and Alex Pierce. They played well. Over 100 yards receiving yards. But listen, old man Flacco, I told you people oh here, God. can still sling it. He steadied the ship. There was yeah. so much concern about P.J. Walker and DTR. Who's going to be our quarterback? Old man Flacco straight off the couch in L.A. Died 250 uh-huh. yards. He, he, he just put the – you know, what he has done – he has calmed the waters in Cleveland. I'll That's be even better. If you look at the four teams on the right that are on the outside looking in, and then you Thank consider you. that the Jacksonville Jaguars have a backup quarterback at least for, it looks like, next week sure. in their Jeez. game against the Browns. The Steelers have Trubisky. Ugh. The Browns have maybe Flacco, maybe DTR again. <laughs> the Colts, as you said, Gardner Minshew. Playing well. The Texans are sitting there. They lost their best wide receiver. The Denver Broncos lost a huge game, of course, to Houston last week. The picks. Bengals have Jake Browning. And the Bills have the best quarterback, not even debatably, out of all eight of those teams. Facts. Do the Bills make the run? Is yes. that happening? No. Thank you. The Bills are, are making the, the run. Are the they're, Bills getting in? They're, they're listen, not. I can't promise you they'll <laughs> beat the Chiefs. They'll probably beat the Chiefs, and they will win out. They're going to be in the playoffs. And if you are one of those division leaders, the Bills are the last team you want to play on the other side. I agree with you on that because they the got the best quarterback. The last team you want to play. Yeah, by the way, the Bills, if you go from Jacksonville, right now the four seed, down to the 13 seed. Bills. The Bills, it's not even easily. Close. Easily. Are the best team. If you're the Ravens or the Dolphins, the Bills are the last team yeah. you want to play. They are who their record says they are. Okay, Bill Parsons. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. That record's going to get better. They're going to lose to the Browns. Uh, we got two more for you, real quick here. Yeah, the New York Jets are a dumpster fire. Yeah. They don't have a legitimate quarterback on the roster. What's the butt on this one? Yeah. yeah well, I'm, I'm They've got What's 13 the straight years without making the postseason. But. But what? Nah, they're just a dumpster. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, got I got nothing. I got to hold it. No, 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 no. Honestly, no. And, and this is this is your man. Robert Sala is your man 100 grand. As you stated earlier in the show, <laughs> you talk to him. What can you talk about to this team? What can you say to this team going yeah. into Houston? Going into Houston? Yeah. Well, you keep telling your defense, uh, sorry. Uh, can you please help us out and get another safety? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean what you say? They're grown men. They don't want to hear it. They all get on the plane together. I'm sure they don't talk at all. They go, they lose, they come home. That's what the Jets do. We talked about it uh, yesterday. I thought yes, Sunday's game, and I know we're not going to do a deep dive. Watching them against the Falcons was the hardest time I ever had to watch the New York Jets. Yeah, the only good thing for the Jets is that the Charger-Patriot game was worse. 
That was oh, the yeah. only good thing oh, yeah. for the New York Jets because that game was 6 nothing. That's unwatchable football. Yeah. All right, I got one more for you before we take a break. Yeah! Carmen Electra is on OnlyFans. Okay. Let's just enjoy that, right? She still has a fastball. She was hot there. The butt that the guys upstairs want me to give you is, it was 20 years too late, but I'm with Willie. Does it? Let's I mean, it to me. Yeah. My, my upsetness is that I had a shot there years ago. Is that oh, you cranking it back? Yeah, she, Craig? No, she, there you go, me, Dennis Robin, Carmen. Whoa. That's half the reason I said no. Power <laughs> throw. Yeah, but there's a difference. His nickname's the worm. You know, that comes with Mine's the snake. <laughs> right. <laughs> Garden snake. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a difference. Yeah, don't make any interim jokes now either. All right. I, got, I, I hear what you guys are saying upstairs. <laughs> yeah, it's a true story. She asked me out for drinks, and I panicked because she'd be with David Navarro. I just couldn't do it. Uh, in any event, in any event, Possibly. it was a mistake. I thought she was a shooter. No, shooter, shooter. It was a mistake. Shoot. It was a mistake. Oh, it was a mistake. I, I, like I wouldn't be I like it. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, Dave Navarro. All right, coming up, we got your mid-show headlines, including last night's amazing comeback and win uh, by the Cincinnati Bengals against the Jacksonville Jaguars and the ramifications that loss has on Jacksonville and the positive side as the Bengals stay alive for the postseason. Plus the injury to Trevor Lawrence. We've got an update after this. Hey, having a great Tuesday morning. Thanks for joining us here on the Carton Show. You know Willie Colon, he's you. the Super Bowl champion. You know David Jacoby, and of course my main man, Mr. Pots and Pans, right here. Pots to go, Burris, number 17. And also Black for Bowl champion with the New York Giants. Time now for mid your headlines. Crazy game last night. Major ramifications when it comes to the postseason. And Jacoby's got it. Jake Browning was dealing. This was the game-winning field goal in a surprising win for the Bengals over the Jaguars. We'll start with the Jaguars. Trevor Lawrence went down. Looked like a very bad yeah. ankle injury. They lost the game. They were supposed to be the number one seed if they won. How bad was last night for the Jets? Yeah, it's a significant because they controlled the number one seed. If they had won, bang, you number one. You get the home uh, playoff games. You get the bye. And all roads have to come through Jacksonville. If you can hang on to it. We've been over their schedule a million times. Easiest schedule of the teams that are competing for that number one seed. This is a colossal failure on the Jaguar side, especially on that defensive side. Because you're going up against a backup quarterback who prior to yesterday had done nothing all that great. Yep. And you give up 34 points to the guy and you ruin everything. And now you go from a team that was controlling the number one seed to a team that I don't think this will happen. But you could miss the playoffs now. Oh, yeah. Again, I don't think that happens. I think they still get in and maybe even win the division and have a high seed. But that is a colossal failure on the Jaguars' defensive side yep. to give up 34 points to a backup quarterback. Now, the flip side of that is you give the backup quarterback credit. Oh, yeah. Dude Ball. came in and balled his ass off and was the reason they won that game. Uh, the issue, though, for Jacksonville now is going forward, right? Mm. It seems, according to all the reports, good news, ankle's not broken, but it seems like they've resigned themselves to the reality that he's out. At least for one week, maybe multiple weeks. Now, in Kansas City, everybody's going, come on, man up. Our guy damn near broke his ankle. He played. Not all ankle injuries are the right. same, obviously. And no one's ever accused Trevor Lawrence of not being a tough guy. That being said, I'm shocked he didn't break it. Right. And they play the Cleveland Browns this week. Yes. And the Cleveland Browns have their own quarterback problems. But now there's blood in the water with Jacksonville. And the Browns are favored to win that game in Cleveland against a team with a backup quarterback. Yeah, on top of that, if you watched that game last night, the Jacksonville Jaguars offensive line struggled that times, right? And so you're talking about it going against the number one defense in the Browns. Like, it's going to be hell in the water, especially, and I don't, I, I can't even say the backup's name right now, but he's going to have a tall task. What's interesting about last night's game, you talk about the Bengals had, I think, the, one of the worst run, rush defenses in the league. That should have been, it, it should have been Etienne crazy. And he did have some splash plays, but overall, I thought the Jaguars should have did a better job, better job on the ground. Now, CJ Beathard is the backup quarterback. Beathard, and by the way, he came yeah, in. Yeah, he got him. He got him down. I thought he did a good job. There's that one holding penalty right. late, which was a good call. I mean, it was a blatant holding on the offensive line. Reconnected. I think it was to Ridley deep. Yep, it was. That would have set them up to maybe win the game. Obviously, he came back because of the holding call. But Beathard, in a limited amount of opportunity last night, mm -hmm. 
look to be competent at least, right? Right. Hey, I mean, looking at this Trevor Lawrence walking into this tunnel, it doesn't look like a two or three week injury. I, I think it's you more think like worse? five, yeah. five to six weeks. Can I ask you a quick question about that, Plax? And you too, Willie. I'm watching. Jacoby and I talked about yeah. this before. Yeah. Why is he walking? What is happening? Right. We have golf carts in Jacksonville. <laughs> Half the population's over well, 75. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey your franchise quarterback is being helped into the locker room by the but the local police officer. Right, right, so, right. But do, do you guys play? Why, why isn't there more help? I don't know. That's a very good question. Usually, it, I mean, it's a side story. I'm just looking at it going, right. we can't put this guy in a golf cart and get him yeah. there quicker? In it, any it, event, it, it, yeah, really C.J. Beathard being the starting quarterback, not to knock C.J. Beathard. Right. He's never been asked to play this year, obviously. Mm. And he's had limited experience in the NFL. The Jaguars are in a spot now. It seems like th these things always happen to the Jacksonville Jaguars. They always let you down when you think uh, think they're getting better. Uh, in the beginning of the season, they gave up, what, 30, 34, 35 right. points to the Houston Texans. But the Houston Texans aren't a bad football team as we see now. And same with Detroit Lions. I mean, th these teams, when they, we, just when you think they're clearing that hurdle. Something happens. Games like this happen to them. But, listen, give all the credit to Jake Brown and the man and, and that good. offense. Who would have thought that this, uh, the Bengals would have amassed almost they're, five, 500 yards of offense They were essentially a 10-point underdog defense. last night, rightfully yeah. so. You got a backup quarterback. You got a team in disarray because, you know, Big Joe's out. And all of a sudden, Brown shows up and goes, I don't care what anybody says. I'm going out to play. The story of the game wasn't, oh, they won because Trevor Lawrence was hurt. They were winning the entire game. And the way – I want to give a lot of props to Zach Taylor because the way they brought Browning along in the game, they gave him a lot of easy receptions early. He was like 9 for 9, 11 for 12 to start the game. And then he started opening it up, and they gave him a lot of confidence moving You're through right, the game. You're right, Jacoby. It looked like a Joe Burrow offense. I mean, yeah. peppered it around. Like, Joe Mixon had two touchdowns, and Martez had a couple big catches. T. Higgins, Tyler Higgins, Boyd. Boyd. That yeah. boy had that one dumb minute interception that That's I just blows my mind. Uh, uh, other than that, man, it looked like Joe Burrow was running this offense, but it happened to be Jake Brown. Hey, there was no drop off at all, right? Offensively exactly. for this team, nope. talking, wide receivers had no drops, which is always big. Mm -hmm. And he went out there and ran his offense, and just like Joe Burrow, listen, if he keeps playing like this for the rest of this season, then it's a shot that they're, that they're the, back the alive can't can't make the playoffs. Spot. Right now, look, you know, the other part of this game, of course, is that the Jacksonville Jaguars. Also missed a couple of field goals yeah. in the game. McPherson missed a real long one, 57-yarder, yeah. and connected from 52. It was actually interesting. He thought he had missed it. He missed it. Yeah, that's and hilarious. Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was <laughs> cursing at himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just real quick take a look at the Bengals' schedule. You guys can put it up just real fast because now they're back to 500, meaning they're back in the conversation. And to be fair, if Browning plays the way he played last night, not that that's the new expectation, but it shows you that we're going to run our offense right. the way we ran it with Joe Burrow. Which is big, by the which way. Which is smart. Absolutely. Like, we're not going to go into a show. We've got great talent. Let's try to use it. Colts is a winnable game. Vikings is a winnable game. Pittsburgh is a winnable game. I'll hold judgment on Kansas City for the moment. And week 18, we'll see if that even matters. But the next three weeks are winnable games, yes, sir. meaning the Cincinnati Bengals, who right now sit in the 10 spot behind the Broncos, behind the Texans. Remember, they've got some tiebreakers that go their way also from earlier this year in head-to-head -head matchups. The Bengals are not dead yet. And either are the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yesterday we were on the show looking at their schedule. They've got literally like the easiest schedule amongst all these teams to yeah. finish. And I don't think that C.J. Beathard's going to light the world on fire and win a bunch so of either. games. Right. But they just need to get three wins. But what's weird about that? Do it. I have to question what you said there because – you know, we live in a, in a tech world, right? And I have not seen a single post from Duval County in the last 12 oh, hours. Oh, no. Oh, right? Duval, where you at? But I hey, mean, hey. earlier this <laughs> yeah. year, Duval County was loud, oh. obnoxious, name-calling. They were Googling? Googling. Hardcore. <laughs> yeah. Googling people. Googling. Where you at, Duval? Hey, hey. And in the last 12 hours, hey. I have yeah. not seen yeah. a single at post. At the card show. Where well, you at, at Duval? Duval. Oh, as, as of yesterday, we were saying that the Jacksonville Jaguars had arguably the easiest yep, they did. Uh, uh, schedule for the rest of the year, but that was with Trevor Lawrence. That's correct. Now you got this backup quarterback. It's not yep. so easy. They were going up against a lot of backups, and they had their rock star playing quarterback. <laughs> and now Rocky Dennis is out. We don't even know for how long. I suppose there'll be an update. Rocky. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. Moving on to our second headline, and that involves the game of the week, the game of the year, the game of the century, the game of the millennia. Of course, we're talking about the Eagles against the Cowboys. Mike McCarthy was asked about the game and gave a very simple yet complex answer. This is an excellent opportunity for us to play in playoff-type games without, you know, without 
playoff consequences, and I think that serves very well uh, because December football is something that you know I've, personally I've always enjoyed. Uh, I think it's a it's a great indication of, of where you are as a team and and what you need to. Um, Obviously, do to get into the playoffs and be ready for the playoffs. So, uh, we're looking for. I mean, it's it's the Cowboys and the Eagles. I don't think you have to say anything more than that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Except wrong about the first thing. It's the Cowboys and the Eagles. <laughs> don't say anything more than that. Will this game live up to the hype? Yeah, I think it will actually. Um, Philly San Fran didn't obviously because Philly just wasn't right, and San Fran dominated them. I think this game has a much more of an opportunity to be close and to go back and forth. The one thing I disagree with Mike McCarthy there, though, guys is how this is like a playoff game without the implications on the playoffs. Eh, wrong. Oh, everything. Because if the Cowboys lose this game, you're the five seed. Mm-hmm. You ain't the two. You ain't the three. You ain't the four. You're obviously not the one. Your best bet is to be the best of the wild card teams, meaning you're not playing another game at home nope. in January. Yep. You're a wild card team. And look, obviously wild card teams have won Super Bowls. Plax is sitting right here. He was a part of one of them. But the reality is that this is a significant game because you're either going to be the one, the two, or the five. Period. Stop. And if you lose this game, you're a lock to be the five seed. You can't get to one or two because you can't win the division. So this game has serious ramifications for the Dallas Cowboys and whether they're playing a home playoff game or not. Yeah, the bottom line is that there's a cause for concern anywhere, and that's the Dallas defense. We talk about Deron Bland that got exposed, right? Like, he got exposed the other yeah, day. Yeah, the Seattle. Right? And on top of that, you talk about Seahawks team that came into that game into Dallas and gave it gave the Cowboys absolute hell all the way down to the wire. So as much as you want to praise Dak in this offense, you now have to tap on the door of the defense. Like, you cannot let A.J. Brown and company come in off a bad loss to 49ers and, and disrupt what we have going on but right you know, the difference, that was a trap game. Their defense was suspect, yep. but they won. Sure. Philly's coming off a game in which their defense was suspect, and they lost. You're definitely going to get Philly a game this week. I agree. Because yes. they, they know the importance of this game moving forward. But it seems like every season we're always saying that this is the, this is the, this is the most important game and Mike uh, caught this coaching for, for the Dallas Cowboys. This is the <laughs> biggest game for that coach. Because if he doesn't win this game, Based off of, you know, everything that happened with Kellen Moore and him coming in, being the offensive coordinator, calling these plays, if they don't go out and win this game on Sunday, it's going to be it's the same old Cowboys. Yeah, and then, of course, you're two games behind Philly. They would have swept you for the season. Yep. You, it really makes you three games. Behind. So, I mean, you can't win the division. The best you'll be is the five seed, and it's a lot easier being the one seed than it is the five seed. This essentially is a playoff game for the Dallas Cowboys. Not as much for the Eagles, because the Eagles could still win the division. Their beef would be, can we somehow overtake San Francisco for the number one seed? Because you lose that tiebreaker based on last weekend's game. This is a significant game, I think, in Mike McCarthy's coaching career for Dallas and for Dak Prescott, who's had great success against the, uh, the Eagles. He's had great regular seasons as well, and he's playing his ass off right now. Maybe the best football he's played in his eight-year career. But this is a huge game for the Dallas Cowboys. Let me ask you a question. So if you think Mike McCarthy doesn't make it to, at least to the NFC Championship game, you think he's the coach of the Dallas Cowboys? Like I think he is unless there's one guy that's willing to coach there, right. and that's Bill Belichick. What if they, what, what, well, what, what they go out in the first round? Then I think they're going to make a very tough decision. I think they're going to stay in-house. You have Dan Quinn. Yeah, but I don't know. to me, if Belichick's available, and I know he's still like a giant you know, consultant right. and very close with the Maris and the Tishes, I'm not sure if he would go to Dallas. But outside of that, I think McCarthy's coming back. They're Good winning question, football though. games. They're playing well. But Plax is right. No, at some is. point, yes. the Dallas Cowboys, you're winning a road playoff game against old 45-year-old Tom, Tom Brady, Brady last yeah, year. Yeah. Isn't enough. You have to get to the NFC Championship game. At least. Minimum, if yeah, you're the Dallas right. Cowboys, yeah. because you've got the team to do it. This like, is the team. This, this the team, team is good enough to win a Super Bowl. If you get knocked out, in the wild card round or the divisional round, there's blood in the water for Mike McCarthy. In the You're divisional right. round by the Niners or the Eagles, I think that's excusable. I, I don't think so. Either. I don't remember. Jerry Jones is 80-something years old. 81 to be exact. And he firmly <laughs> believes that this is one of only four or five teams that was good enough to make a run and win a Super Bowl. If they don't get to the championship game, yeah. I, mean, I don't McCarthy, think anybody's safe. And McCarthy's one and two in the playoffs. And so you talk about possibly one and three, it ain't going to happen to Jerry. This is Gore. such a big game for the yeah, Dallas Cowboys. Really we should all go to Dallas and be a part of it. No, no, I, thanks. I, I'm no. Moving on to the final headline, Craig. 
It happened. What happened? Weeks ago, you said that Brock Purdy should be in the MVP conversation. Yeah. And now he's not just in the conversation. He is the favorite right. to be, he should be the MVP. Taking a look at these right. odds, do you expect him to actually win? I mean, I said it back in September okay, that Brock Craig. Purdy should be an MVP candidate. Uh, he outplayed Jalen Hurts last weekend. He outplayed Dak Prescott a month and a half ago. So who's his competition? You know, I'll tell you who's competition is. The guy that's not on that list, Lamar Jackson. He's not on that list. Oh. You like Lamar Jackson? I have Lamar up there too, by the way. Hey, and Tyree Kill's not on the other side. Nine and three. I don't think he's playing better than Brock hey. Purdy. Look at. Do we have? Do we have look, Brock Purdy? We can last, get it. We can get it. Hey, yeah. he, he might be play, playing better than Lamar Jackson right now, but it's a possibility that the Baltimore Guys, Ravens will be the number one seed. In the but I want to show you what he did on third down Sunday. Can we throw up the graphic real quick? Oh, man, nobody cares. Third down. Eight for ten. Two touchdowns. Brock Purdy MVP. The man was damn near perfect. Third down percentage doesn't win you an MVP. It keeps you in games. Come on, It keeps you in five straight touchdowns. Lamar Jackson is not on that list. Oh, and he won't. And way, he should be. I've won't. been a big fan and supporter of this, his for MVP as well. Let me tell you the something. two guys missing are Lamar Jackson and Tyreek Hill. Let me tell you something. The Baltimore Ravens at the end of the year will be the number one seed in the AFC. I agree with you. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. By the way, you pay attention to the mountain every week. They'd be in the top of the mountain for a month and a half. But great to see Vegas coming around to my line of thinking. Brock Purdy, uh, the quarterback of the best team in the league, is a lock right now to be the MVP. He's not a lock. Magic Black's go from Mr. Irrelevant to the lock. MVP it's, of the league. No. It's basically only four candidates for MVP. It's the number one, number two of each conference, the quarterback of those teams. Look, by but the way, but again, if you start looking at the guys he's played against, and I'm with you, Plax, Lamar Jackson has to be on that list as a top four or five worst case scenario for MVP because he's the quarterback of the best team in the AFC. So if that's how we're going to use it, if that's my metrics for MVP, then he's got to be on the you list. Saw, yeah, like, huh? how do you use something else. What do y'all do after the show? Go, go up, sit, get together, and huddle up. What do y'all do? We might. It's well, possible. Yeah. Oh, we might. Plex. We might. We might. Huh? No. <laughs> Last week, they taught me it. how to make my fungo. Yeah. So I'm feeling pretty, pretty good about myself. <laughs> got right a moonshine. We're living together. We're doing good. <laughs> All right. Uh, we, got, we got much work coming your way. It's funny talking about MVP candidates. And nobody here on the dais referenced the name Patrick Mahomes. Is he responsible? For the Kansas City Chiefs Ooh. being in a bad spot this year, we'll discuss very quickly right after this. All right, welcome back to the Carton Show. Thank you for joining us this Tuesday morning. You guys have a very quick choice, quick vote. It's a democracy. In this hand, I've got Patrick Mahomes and his struggles in Kansas City. In this hand, I've got the secret recipe of something. Do you want Patty Mahomes or do you want to go with the secret door number two? I want door number two. Door number two. Plax. I'll take door number two. Door, door number, number two. two. It's unanimous. Door number two. I'm going to let Jacoby set it up. It's something that happened last night that might surprise a lot of you. Jacoby, take it away. The NBA in-season tournament has been sort of confusing thus far, especially in the group stage, but now it's the knockout stage. Very simple. You win, you advance. And it's early December, December 4th, watching Monday Night Football during halftime. Flick over to the in-season tournament, and this is what you see between the Pacers and the Celtics. Halliburton, the inbounder. They have to work quickly here. Throws in straight away. It's here. Yeah. That's good. Here comes White, and his pass broken up. Halliburton ahead of the field. Neesmith. <laughs> it it appears to Kobe that the players and the fans are in care. <laughs> It was electric. An early it's season, crazy. regular season game yeah. was absolutely electric last night. That it felt was, like a playoff game. That was a Monday night game between Indiana and Boston. Yeah, and good. you would have thought that was game six of the NBA Finals. But the NBA That's it. why the in-season yes. tournament is a positive. Right. Huge success. Yes. So I'm and glad the Knicks you brought tonight. that up. 
Yeah, I'm glad what you guys got? chose door Bucks, number two. Bucks, Knicks tonight. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh, the Knicks advance. That's a lock. Um, uh-huh. <clears throat> but a lot of players in the NBA are not a fan of the play-in tournament. But when you have games like this, especially for Indy, uh, playing on a national stage and yep. beating everybody got the Boston Celtics, pegged to win an NBA championship, it's good for the NBA. Plus, you get a half a million bucks if you win, and no one says no to that. All right, back to the NFL. Patty Mahomes. Patty Mahomes takes accountability for the Chiefs' struggles. We know he's lying. <laughs> we know we know he's not the reason the Chiefs offense is struggling. But this is called leadership 101, despite the fact everybody knows it's Rasheed Rice's fault. Here is Patrick <laughs> Mahomes. Let's sit in this right after the game on Sunday. Go ahead. I'm all this killing. It's my job, and if the defense gives me an opportunity to win the game, I have to go down there and, and win it with, the, with my teammates. Um, and uh, obviously, I haven't done that enough this season. Um, and so uh, i got to try to get better because uh, I'm sure we'll have no, more opportunities as the season goes on. Yeah, look, it's not Patrick Mahomes' fault. We've talked about it a lot. Guys are dropping balls. There is no standout next to Travis uh-huh. Kelsey. Travis Kelsey's not having a typical, you know, Pro Bowl type year over the last month and a half. You could come up with a million reasons as to why age, you know, uh, Swift, whatever the nonsense is. But the yeah. offense hasn't been right from week one. And every week, I think we all do the same thing. Because we all have so much respect for Patrick Mahomes, especially you guys as players know how difficult it is to play that level of quarterback in the NFL game after game after game. The Chiefs just aren't right. Whether it's defense uh, at times, you know, being a turn style, Mm -hmm. or whether it's guys getting open and dropping the ball, guys not getting open, him not trusting guys. This has been a a difficult year for Mahomes because nothing comes easy right now. Yeah, outside of Pacheco, Kelsey, and Mahomes, there's not a lot to this offense. And when you talk about going in Green Bay against Jordan Love, who you should be the most dominant quarterback on the field, you was outplayed by Jordan Love. And what's interesting about the Chiefs going forward, man, is that they valid they have a young receiving core. But this receiving core hasn't showed up. Right. Though, right? And now you talk, talk about Patrick Mahomes really trying to shoulder this team. And he's, I, he's, I think he's running out of gas. Like, there's right. so much you can do from the quarterback position. All you can do is find an open man and let your playmakers make plays. Yeah, it's funny. And they're not doing he's it. played so much football because they're always in the playoffs making deep runs to a Super Bowl that we've just come to expect, oh, yeah. it's Mahomes, he'll figure out a way. And that's why I, from day one, going all the way back to you know July and August, have had a problem with the front office of the Chiefs because they kind of got lazy when it came to always trying to acquire yeah. better talent. And not that these guys are, you know, you know, I don't have to say like Juco players playing NFL. Like they're legitimate NFL players. Right. They get open, they drop the ball. They don't get open, whatever the case may be. Kansas City has failed Mahomes mm-hmm. in not continually keeping high-level players around him, and that's a fact. Yeah, and I, th- I think overall, when you talk about what Patrick Maroon suffered, especially last game, he didn't have the big play to get him over the hump. That's what we normally say. Like, go back to that Monday night game. Like, that was MBS in the hands, game yep. over against Philly. That didn't happen Sunday. So now he's like, dog, we, we're not looking like we should look this time of year. And not just that, Plax. I'll give you the, what we call the hubris of the Kansas City Chiefs. I know they won the Super Bowl, and I know that's the easy defense where, hey, you're wrong, we're right, we won the Super Bowl, so we made the right decision. But when you allow a guy like Tyreek Hill Mm. to not just walk out the door, but you help him walk out the door and give him multiple teams to choose to go to. It was the Jets, if you remember, and it was the Dolphins. They accepted the offer from both of them, and they told Tyreek, we're so happy to let you go. Mm. We're going to let you pick where you go. And to me, I'm watching what Tyreek's doing, as he's always done in his career, and now the great success of Miami with Tua. And I'm saying to myself, I know he's had some off-the-field stuff, and maybe that's part of it, to be fair. But I'm saying to myself, you had one of the great, and should have been historically great, right. quarterback-to-wide receiver combinations, and you willingly let the wide receiver walk out the door. I mean, number one, you don't let Tyree Hill walk out of the building under any circumstances. Bingo. And a few weeks ago, I said when Patrick Mahomes stood in front of that podium after the Eagles game and took the onus and said, you know what, I got to be better, Put, putting the ball on the wide receiver so they can make plays. But now you get to a point as a, as a professional and as a wide receiver, and you see your quarterback continue to have your back when you know you're not performing at a professional level, you got to take it personal. Because your number one job as a wide receiver is, is number one, is to catch the football. Right. And, and Patrick Mahomes is putting everything on himself. Says, Listen, this man has 3,100 yards and 22, and 22 touchdowns in week 13. And it, we, as a week 13 
the Kansas City Chiefs wide receivers have 30 drops. Yeah. Which they is lead absurd. the league in foot and, and drops. 30 drops in a season from right. a core. I, I've never, I never heard anything like that in my no, life. No, thirty so the, drops. It's like a flip of the coin, right? That means they're getting open. Yeah. Uh, which is, I guess, a good thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, like they know how to get open, they just can't catch. So, so how can you say, from a wide receiver standpoint, and this quarterback continues to have your back as a player? Yeah. And he's putting the ball right on you. Mm -hmm. A drop is not a, 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 a categorized as a as a contested catch. It's it's. The it's ball is in your And not just that, Plax, as a guy who played wide receiver at the highest of all levels, Rasheed Rice is their top wide receiver. Kelsey's, of course, their top right. you know, uh, ball catcher. He's got, what, 74 receptions. Rasheed Rice is 52. There's not another receiver over 30. That's right. Right? That's I mean, crazy. you're talking about guys that have the ability to get open, but as you just said, they lead the league in drops. And at some point, Patty Mahomes is going to explode because the competitive nature of being a – arguably the best quarterback of an entire generation and going out there every week and saying, man, I can't believe they're putting me out there with these guys. Yeah. That gets old at some point. Hey, could you imagine the kind of season that this guy would be having if he had oh. some reliable guys on the outside that were making plays? Oh, you're Talk talking about, about – as a whole. You're talking about a Already quarterback 30, yeah. that could passing. potentially – get close to 6,000 yards passing, exactly. right? Right. It's, right. It's, right? When the Chiefs used to get the ball under two minutes down a score, it was over. Like, it, you used, the game yeah. was just over. Like, you couldn't give them 13 seconds. And now it's happened multiple times this season but, where they lose the game. But on top of that, what we, what we highlighted from the Chiefs was the ability to come back. Like, there were teams that would jump on them, like, 12 points, 21 points. Yep. They'd be like – You'd be like, yeah. Boom, we got yeah, it. Yeah. They can't do that no more, right? They can't do that. And Patty can't do it by himself, and they don't have the receivers to back them up. So, yeah, when you talk about going into the playoffs and they got to go on the road, no, they may be going home early. Here's the other reality for them. You're having lost to Green Bay, obviously his first game, at Lambeau Field. I mean, there's, I mean, most people think man, Buffalo beats yeah. them this weekend, or it certainly will be in the game. Like they're not just going to roll over Buffalo. I think we all give them the win against New England because that. <laughs> I mean, that, you're talking about not having a quarterback. They, they don't play. have a quarterback. But you know, the Raiders are fighting again. They have a rookie quarterback. The Bengals have a backup quarterback who just put 34 on the Jaguars, the and the Chargers just scored six. Scored six points <laughs> yeah. against the yeah. Patriots. Like yeah. Kansas City's gonna be fine. They're gonna win their division. They're just not gonna have the number one seed. That's all. I just all. can't wait to see the score of this uh, Kansas City Chiefs going when they go to New England because. Bill Belichick could do, do crazy things. You know what? We're going to rush two, drop nine, and, <laughs> and, and the game's going to be seven to four. Uh, so, real quick, from a team that's clearly got a quarterback, although a frustrated quarterback, to a team that apparently doesn't have a single quarterback, story yesterday in New York was that the New York Jets were contemplating going back to Zach Wilson, and the story, the allegation, which has been denied, but the allegation was that Zach Wilson told the team, I ain't got no interest to play no more. I don't want to go out there because I might get hurt. Now, I talked to Robert Sala myself last night. Robert Sala told me it's patently false that Zach Wilson actually walked into his office and said, Coach, I want to play. I want the ball. I'm the best quarterback on this team right now. So then I said to Coach Sala, is he playing? Not sure yet. <laughs> you, know, you know what you said yesterday? You said you said something. You know what? And I agree with you for the My first God. time in a long time. Yes. You <laughs> said gross. Zach Wilson is the best option at quarterback for the New York. He is. Yeah. Right yeah. You might be right. But the bottom line, Zach Wilson didn't have to walk in that office and say it. We all saw it. Like yeah. he's clearly the best quarterback in, in that room. What's really bad for the New York Jets? And me and Jacoby were joking about it. Somehow the Jets got the worst quarterbacks of the worst quarterbacks. Yes. Like Tim Boyle was god awful yeah. Sunday. Yeah. And Trevor Simeon getting there, he didn't like he didn't know where he was at or what he was doing. So of course you have to now go back to Zach Wilson. If I'm Robert right. Salah, I'm putting this all to rest. Zach, you're starting this week. No, yeah. last week. Man, it's from an organizational standpoint, benching that man after that Buffalo game. But it does There's you know. There's no way you can put Zach Wilson no, in. I don't, what that else, else, you do what else are you gonna do, Plex? It's the season. The season's did you already watch, sabotaged. Did you watch the game? It's over. Yeah. It doesn't matter who you put back in that quarterback. 
Legend's going to change. But right now, he is the best option. He's going to look like him game. and Joe Douglas are going to look like absolute fools if they put Zach. Fools? No. We're talking no, about no, the Jets. No, 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 we're no. past fools. You can't like, put him back on that football. Why what not? would you do? You why are you not? putting him under center? Man, the season's already over. So what are you going to put Brees Hall under center? You're going to not what? play? What, what are you going to do? Give anybody a chance. So, let me ask you this. So, let me ask you this. Are you are you not putting him out there to try to protect him, or are you trying to win a football game? If you're trying to win a football game, Zach Wilson's your best option. You just said it, Plax. Man, listen, if you were trying to win football games, then you never should have took him out of being a starter quarterback in the first he place. He wasn't playing well. You had to try something. Nobody's playing well behind that offensive line. On Plax, top. you just but said you didn't he know was the what best option. Boy, you showed you he can't do anything. I'm just saying. Simeon showed you he can't do anything. You, you are, you've already showed this man that you don't have the confidence in him as no, a quarterback. Didn't. They, they do this the season out the, the window season. solely protecting Zach Wilson. To be fair, what they also did to Zach was they made him the emergency quarterback. Flax is right. It's not as if they said, you're benched, but if the starter gets hurt, you're the guy, and we're just trying to change things up. They said, not only are you benched, we're not going to allow you to play because you've been that bad. But now, the re- I want to be clear. The story that he doesn't want to play is... Is false. 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 I want to put that out there. At no point did Zach Wilson say to the franchise, I don't want to play because I might get hurt because his career's over if he ever did that. But I'm kind of with Plax. It's not about winning games anymore for the New York Jets. It's not. You can't say that. You I can't would say that, with a big white flag to start the game. Craig. Boyle cannot play. We know that as a fact. But at this stage, and I want to be clear, Zach Wilson is the best option at quarterback. So stay there. But I ain't trying to win no more games. I want the uh, best draft. Don't worry, Zach Wilson lose games. So I would <laughs> don't go, worry about that. I would go tr- – and by the way, think about this. If everybody agrees, including Joe Douglas and Robert Sala, that Zach is the best option. Yes. Then why didn't they Man. just say yesterday, Man. we're going but with Zach? I'm with you on that. But my point is, this defense can't play any better. Man, listen, like, this defense is holding on to his life. If you put Zach Wilson back on this football field, on the center. It does nothing. And he continues to regress and get even worse. But it can't get no worse than what we've seen. It like, can. No, did you see Sunday's game? <laughs> to be fair, it <laughs> did you see? No, it didn't. Last year was pretty bad. Right. <laughs> my point is, oh, listen, man. if it's already bad, and there's nothing coming from it, and he just gives you that one flickering hope, yeah. Throw the hope out there. Look, here's what, the what are you hoping for? Yeah, what, what do you mean you're hoping like, for? He's going to touchdown? So, you're talking about, first of all, when? you're talking about Boyle not being able to do anything with the offense. Trevor Simeon, I don't think he knows the offense. Zach Wilson gives you a shot to at least but be competitive. The Texans lost to the Panthers. I didn't say that. Jets. I am. I don't want to win. So, they just come out with a big white flag and say, we're not playing today. So, you're going to let CJ Stroud have a, like, probably throw the most he's ever thrown? I mean, look, my defense is still my defense, but I don't want to win anymore. Like, I'm a pragmatic guy. I want the best possible draft pick so uh, I can either get Marvin Harrison Jr., a new quarterback, you know, an offensive lineman, something. That's bad something. football. Yeah, that's I want about, something. That's so now bad. you're talking about tanking. We talk about this all the yeah, time. This tanking in like the tanking. NFL does I not want work. I tank. I love tanking. Tanking in the NFL does not work. It does I, not I, listen, work. It does just, not work. I just don't know how I would feel from a personal and player standpoint if I was benched by the team. So you know what? Let's put uh, Boyle out there and Trevor Simeon. And he's watching all this uh, resonate from the sideline. Uh, I told you it was bad. I'm worried about about my defense, who's been fighting tooth and nail all season, who literally needs and deserves to win one You're Williams. You're Williams. You're you're any – Sauce Gardner, you're any of those players, and the team is intentionally putting out a quarterback they know doesn't give them the best chance to win. Right. That's that's, poison. That is just poison. I I agree with you, Coach. I think if you're a Sauce Gardner in the defense, you look at all three of them quarterbacks and you go – but, None of them yeah, but you don't have a quarterback on the roster that can help the defense. Yeah. Yeah. His name is Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson. The Look, one guy. What happened to you during the three-game win streak? The confidence counter was right. all the way over here. We had a whole half that guy. A whole half that guy. Here's the one thing that hasn't changed. Our offensive line is the worst in football. No, no matter who's good, back yeah. there, it ain't going to be pretty. We're not going to score a lot of points. We didn't score with Zach Wilson. We didn't score with Boyle. We're not going to score with Simeon. So and circle I'm, the block, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. And I'm in favor of tanking. I love the tank. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Not good Don't for you think that's poisonous for the defense? No, it's poisonous I think for you young tank. players. It is poisonous for Garrett, Look, Look, Garrett Wilson. You hey, go detrimental to the whole team. Call today. Let's, let's put a Duncan tank back here and just throw footballs in. I like that. As uh, long as you're the first yeah. guy yeah, in the tank. Who's throwing the footballs and who's in the tank? Yeah, by the way, if you want to stay dry, sit in a tank with water beneath you and have Zach Wilson throw spirals at you. No, you'll be safe. You know what? They're beating the Texans. Zach Wilson's going to start. They're going to beat the Texans. We're going to beat the Texans. I don't want to. 
win. He, I, there's no benefit in winning. You know like, that. I'm not, I, lose, 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 no, lose. No, you don't lose. want that. Go 4 and 13, get me the best player. And I don't want Kayla Williams anymore either. They've been trying to I'll get us to break too. for like 10 minutes. I hate, <laughs> I hate these quarterbacks, not the ones that cry and decide them to their moms. I can actually yeah, appreciate that too. softness. But dudes that don't want to play in bowl games, did you're a 20 year old kid and you don't want to compete? I hate that. Hate it with a passion. Kayla Williams is dead to me. In any event, much more coming up on football teams that matter, including the Miami Dolphins, who now have the inside track by a lot to be the number one seed come playoff time because the Jaguars stubbed their toes last night. A little Miami love coming your way right after this. By the way, uh, I try to run a tight ship around here, meaning. You can't be out after 8 o'clock at night. You need your beauty sleep. I'm going to be a part of this show. And then a little birdie says to me, you got one of your men out there cheating on you, Craigie? I go, oh, it ain't Plaxico Burst. He gets to sleep. It ain't David Jacoby. He gets to sleep. It was my main man, Willie Colon. Hey, Colon. Out late last night, dressed to the nines, hanging out with Forget the Boy. Oh, my God. It's the me. Event last night? It was for St. Barnabas Hospital in the Bronx, man. It was great. It was a lot of giants in the house, a couple old time legends. Doc Gooden was in the house. David Tyree, your old teammate. Uh, it was a good time. A couple of Jets. Will McDonald met him for a second. Dexter Lawrence is a big human being, by the way. Did you ask Will McDonald why he's allergic to sacks? No. Oh, oh. No. I didn't. But to, hey, shout out to Tommy. Tommy was awesome, man. There you I go. There's a Tommy DeVito. Tommy, Tommy. Yeah. His dad, by the way, is the number one boiler salesman in the state of New Jersey. Oh, is he the boiler? He like, like, like hot water boilers? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what it's that time of year. Boiler. Yeah. Boiler. His sales just went through the roof. You're yes. damn right. All right. I I think we're going back over to Jacoby now. We are. With something football related. Is it first in football? It's first in football. It's yeah. first down, Crager. And we have A.J. Brown fresh off the loss to the Niners. Was asked about wow. looking ahead to the game against the Cowboys. And he was very philosophical about it. Here he is reacting to the question about the next game. You have no choice. You know? Oh. And mope around and oh. you know, be sad and be mad at yourself about it. But... You know, we got a big opponent coming up next week in Dallas on the road. You gotta, you gotta put your big boy pants on. You know, it's life. You know, yeah, everything gonna go your way every single time. If you think you're gonna go out there and, and just win in life every single time without without a blow? It's, it's not gonna happen like that. Does the blowout loss to the Niners make you feel like they'll be more ready for the Cowboys? First off, who knew that Socrates was playing for the Philadelphia Eagles, yeah, giving us life, life advice is. about it? Give it one hundred. It made sense. It made sense. It made sense. Uh, Give it a one hundred. Yeah, so crates uh, Brown right there. Um, look, uh, wah, we lost. Wah, put our big work pants on. Wah, you could mope around He's all day and be all. negative. Uh, I know you love AJ Brown. He's a great wide hey, receiver. Man, hey, hey, December comes at you fast in this season. <laughs> uh, uh, one or two weeks can change. The season, yeah, a, a projection going into the playoffs. And listen, it, uh, Philadelphia got mopped, yeah. Sunday, yep, yes, and they know that, yep. And and the Dallas Cowboys are going to get uh, uh, Philadelphia's best effort on Sunday. They, they know how big this game is because I said, to, I said yesterday, I said, listen. The Philadelphia Eagles still, still control their own destiny. Yep. So they have to put this game behind them. They probably went, went into the office on Monday, looked at the film, took the negatives, positives, and moved on to Dallas because that game is over. You yeah. start looking, and I tell you what, forward. you know, this game is much bigger for Dallas than it is for Philly. Here's the reality. Philly wins this game. The division's a wrap. Dallas cannot win the division in the remaining games they have left, meaning they're looking at the five seed, yep. and they're not going to get a home playoff game, making it much more difficult to obviously get to an NFC Championship game or the playoffs. That's just facts because they're in the same division. If, however, Dallas does win the game, then you're talking about their 10-3, and three, Philly's 10-3, and three, tiebreakers coming to play. It'll go back and forth over the course of the final four or five weeks of the season. But the other thing it does, it props San Francisco then back up, assuming they beat Seattle. They become the number one team. And, of course, they have all the tiebreakers, haven't beaten Dallas and Philly. So, during this game, and I know we say it a lot and we overstate it, the biggest game of the year. It's the biggest game of the year <laughs> because is. there's so much at stake. Philly can wrap up the division and maintain their hold on the number one seed. 
If Dallas wins, San Francisco becomes the number one seed, and now you have a fight over the last month for who wins the NFC East. Yeah, but th this is why it's I, awesome. I agree with AJ Brown because this is the one thing that happened, right? You go into that game against the Niners, the offense couldn't keep up. They couldn't keep the Eagles' offense couldn't keep up with the Niners' offense. Valley AJ Brown had eight catches for 114 yards, but go back to the Cowboys and Seahawks. The Cowboys put up 42 points at home. Right, so if you got an offense that can't keep up against the Niners, and you got to go to Dallas and try to keep up with Dak, except you, for one thing, and Plax is going to say it, I don't want to steal words out of your mouth. Every game's its own thing, right? right. Just because you give up 42 at home to San Francisco doesn't mean Dallas, who by the way only scores 40 how do you, points at home, but we talked is about this, do that to you. right? But we talked about this being a validation game, right? Like we only measure ourselves, uh, yourself against another worthy opponent. So sure. that was a worthy for, opponent for, for, for both teams, though. Right, it's a validation game, and I say this about the Eagles. Listen, if they go down to Dallas and, and win this game, going to Seattle is no guarantee that you're going to win this game in Seattle. Sure. So uh, uh, Seattle's going to play them tough on the road. I, I think for the next two weeks. The focus level for the Philadelphia Eagles has to be at all time, all time high because you still have to finish in front of the Yeah, and then with the, the, the rub for Philly, we know it's on the, on the table for Dallas. If Dallas loses, they're the five seed. They can't win the division at that point. So you know everything at stake for Dallas. Philly's a little different. It's trickier for Philly because they sat there ten and one. Everything was great. Yeah. We find ways to win close games. Yo, know, we're a little cocky. We got your peacocking all over the place. Then you get embarrassed at home. You give up a forty burger to San Francisco. If they lose to Dallas, that Seattle game, then you're like, whoa. Seattle's offense is starting to click based on what they did against Dallas uh, last week in a, in a loss, right? Yeah. Then you're like, what are the Philadelphia Eagles? And that's right. when doubt starts creeping in. Right. I, I, I think right now, if you're A.J. Brown, you got to talk to this offense. Like, like, our defense needs help because that defense got beat up too. You know what I mean? So they got to be the savior on offense. Yeah, make no mistake about it. All the pressure's on the, on the Philadelphia Eagles moving forward. Yes, 100%. Because even if the Dallas Cowboys do lose this game, they're still going to get into the playoffs. Right. But yeah. now you're talking about – the the the, uh, the possibility of the Eagles not having a home field advantage, and what we saw on Sunday, I don't believe the Eagles can beat San Francisco in California. Neither do I. And look, the reality for Philly is they're best the one seed. Uh, they could drop down to five, obviously, like the Dallas Cowboys are. Yep. But there's a really good chance that they just come in as the number two seed. And then they're at home until the NFC Championship game, assuming San Francisco you know, wins out and takes care of business at home in the one playoff game they would have prior to it. But it's huge. It's Sunday night. It is huge. Ooh. You're going to have to find Biggest a way to game stay of the year. And uh, come in on Monday, but that is going it. to be a game of games. And let's cross our fingers that it's competitive. Yeah, it should be. It should be. Moving on to second and football. Things just got shaken up in the AFC. Shake and bake. And the Miami Dolphins find themselves in the number one seed and after Jacksonville's <laughs> loss have it even more solidified. Tua talked about the opportunity and how he and his teammates are going to seize it. Not more seriously, but everyone's starting to do a little more. Um, you see guys staying a little longer, watching film together. When uh, meetings, that you know, there's no meetings after practices on third down days. You see a lot of uh, position groups meeting um, and staying back a little longer. You're starting to see a lot of guys staying out on the field a little longer as well. So um, I, I think that's what Mike is seeing is everyone, everyone knows that we can do something special this year. And uh, every, like no one on our team is, is trying to waste that opportunity. So two and his teammates are spending a little overtime at the facility, trying yeah. a little harder because the pressure is on. Do you expect them to be right now currently your favorites to represent the AFC in the Super Bowl. Yeah, I mean, well, I think they're going to be the number one seed, especially with that Jacksonville loss last night because the Jaguars had it. I've been on Baltimore the entire time here, and it feels like Baltimore hasn't played in a month, right? Yeah. You know, these bye weeks. So, to me, it's a two-horse race. It's Baltimore, Miami, Miami, Baltimore. They do go head-to-head. -head. I believe it's week 17. Yep. That game will decide number one seed uh, and number two seed. I think that's pretty obvious right now, considering we all agree can Kansas City is broken, at least uh, for the moment. But that, to me, Plax, listen, you famously were not a practice guy, right? Uh, you were <laughs> famous. Plax, Plax is good on Sunday. Really? You can't fight Plax on Thursday. Uh, <laughs> I mean, but it didn't matter because he showed up on Sunday. I remember the story you told us when you uh, first joined Tom Coughlin and before the first practice started, you said my hamstring hurts. And what did Coach Coffin say to you? He was like, uh, well, what, what do you mean hamstring hurts? We haven't even practiced yet. <laughs> uh, I heard it getting in the car. <laughs> that, that was boxing, right? But it's a testament to Mike McDaniel, too. 
Those guys love Mike McDaniel. Well, on top of that, it's a every playoff run I've ever been a part of. Everything he talked about, that's what we did in the building. Yep. Staying after, hanging out with each other in the locker room, eating dinner together, knowing we had a whole family to deal with back home, right? Like, so sometimes what he's talking about is a winning culture, right? Because it's hard. You, we hear ball players say that like, well, I'm a part of a winning culture. What's not a winning culture? What he just described is a winning culture. When guys who are in the building at six in the morning. Not, don't want to leave the building to damn near 8 in the morning because they simply love being around each other. They simply love watching film, putting each other together, paying attention to the little details. That's a sign of a great outfit. And credit Mike McDaniel, right? Because when he got there, there was a lot of talk about, like, who is this guy? Can he even run an office? Like, there were so many question marks. Well, he was also – that was a dysfunctional franchise. With the Brian Flores right. stuff, yeah. with the Tom Brady stuff, yeah. the ownership. They gave up a draft pick because of their meddling. But here's what's going to happen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preface it now. I'm going to say it now. I don't want to say it in a couple weeks. That's the biggest game of the year. <laughs> no, when we get to week 17, we're going to say Miami it. Baltimore yes, it is, is the biggest AFC game, yeah, game of the year. And by the way, the Dolphins beat the league in Russia. So, did, like, they do it all on offense. Well, they we got do. that two-headed monster that Achan's back, too, yeah. right? Between him and Mostert. Look, they're a complete team. I think, I think they're beatable uh, throwing the ball against them. Uh, but their offense is good enough. You know, to outscore everybody. And so much should learn a valuable lesson from what the commandos did last week. You cannot play oh, man to man defense no, against Tyreek Hill. By far the dumbest thing that's happened. It shouldn't shit. take till week right. 13 for us to say you that. Can, right. You have to do what Kansas City did to them, and that's try to bracket him. Yep. He, can, he can have nine catches for 80 yards. That's okay. Right. It's when he's got six catches for a buck fifty and a couple touchdowns that you get screwed. Yeah, I just, Go ahead, for the, I just think for the Miami Dolphins, the last three weeks of the season, we're really going to see what the Miami Dolphins are made of. Yeah. For, for me, yeah. it's all about defense. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, uh, Jalen Phillips goes out with Achilles. Yeah. Last week, you get Butler hurt. And now you're, tr- now you're working to get Jalen Ramsey back in the lineup. So, for the Dolph- Dolphins, it, they have to get stops on defense because I, I don't think that the Dolphins are going to – we're going to continue to score 35, 40 points a game in the playoffs. Yeah, the, the other benefit for the Dolphins, when you do look at their schedule, there's only one uh, cold-weather game. It's the Baltimore game mm-hmm. in Week right. 17. Every other game they have is either inside or in but good weather. But it's still Dallas and Baltimore, and those dark games that they're yeah. just going to walk in and score no, you're right. points. You said that they, about Baltimore. I mean, Buffalo, too. Yeah, they, they, last three, last three yeah. games of the season. Yeah. They could absolutely lose the last three. They're going to win the next two. Yep. They're going to be 11-3, and three, and they're going to have the division wrapped up. No one's going to catch them for the division because, you know, the Bills are too far behind. The Jets and the Patriots sink. But you guys are right. When it comes down to them or Baltimore, that Week 17 game is huge and most likely determines the overall number one seed. And I would favor Baltimore because in Baltimore. it's in their building and people are sleeping on Baltimore merely because they're coming off a bye. Don't sleep on the Ravens. They're as good as anybody. And you can question the Dolphins defense. You cannot question the Baltimore Ravens. Right. What's coming up next here, guys? Third and football. C.J. Stroud what? spoke I about the no, loss of here, his Frank. rookie receiver, Tank Dell. It's only oh, third down. We're tough. going for it. Going to convert. They lost Tank Dell. C.J. Stroud famously has a relationship with him and convinced the Texans to draft him. And this makes me sad. And even C.J. Stroud is sad. Get over it. About it. <laughs> Try to be positive about it, but it's tough, man. I'm, I'm hurt. I, don't, I'm, I can't oh, shoot Cody. I can't oh, come, on, guys. come up here and lie oh, and say, like, oh, we'll be all right. No, it's not, you know. Um, and I love him to death. I told him that. And <laughs> seven, seven to three will be a, a great, a great uh, duo for the next couple years, man. Wow. Right when he I gets mean, back. It ain't like he lost his him. friend. He didn't. Yeah, his it, friend got hurt. His friend. What's wrong with him missing his friends? Right. That's his friend. Yeah. It's football. Yeah. Everybody gets hurt. That's his buddy. Hang on. He want his buddy to succeed. I know. I know. I know. It's, oh, thank you. I know. <laughs> I'm not crying, man. Enough of the crying. Sad. You know. You know. If you guys were out for a show, I'd be sad. He lost his dog. That's my wife. He lost a receiver. I'd be sad next year. Like, please. Enough. He still got Nico Collins. He still got. Robert Woods, he has a running back, he has a defense. Like hey, that was his buddy. Man, 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 CJ Stroud Aww. and T- Tank Dell is one of the main reasons why CJ Stroud is having the season that he is. Yes. Undrafted, those guys trained together um, 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 all off season. Tank Dell wasn't on anybody's radar as far as making nope. an NFL roster and look where the Texans are now because Plax, of that. are you suggesting that the Jets are gonna beat the Texans this weekend? Uh, is that what I'm hearing? Hell no. I <laughs>
I thought I already for, said it. I, I already said it. Minute, I if they start Wilson, they win. If they start Wilson, they win. CJ, stop crying. I thought for one little no. second there. Go play Your football. emotions were going to get the best <laughs> of you. No, never. No. No. <laughs> Not going to happen. Did you ever cry when one of your quarterbacks or uh, went down or no? Like if Ben got hurt and you're like, ugh, Tommy Maddox, ugh. I don't think he missed a game. No, he, he, he never yeah, missed a game. Uh, I know Eli never yeah, missed a game. Eli didn't miss a game. Ben didn't miss a game. Pittsburgh Steelers. Yes, I got hey, it. I got it. I got it. I got it. You don't All right, hurt. listen, Watch we got to take a very quick break coming up. It's your NFL version of a Winners and Losers. Next, right here on FS Long. We've got Plaxico Burst, we got Willie Cologne, we got David Jacoby, and now we have the NFL edition of Winners and Losers. Losers. Let's start off with winners, Plaxico oh. Burris. The San Francisco 49ers, big winners. They've told you for months, they're the best team in football. They went into Philly with revenge on their minds, as Tony Montana said, Rebenga. <laughs> and they went into Philadelphia and put a 40 burger on the Eagles. And now they have the inside track for the number one seed. They don't have the inside track for the number one seed. Uh, that still belongs to the Philadelphia Eagles, but I will say that they are winners. Thank you. I never let the facts get in the way of a good story. <laughs> um, after this weekend, San Francisco Blacks has the inside track on the number one seed. Negative. Yeah, they will be losing. Oh, I'm trying to get it. Because the Philadelphia Obviously Eagles will win this week. They are a game behind Philly. Philly is Dallas. San Francisco doesn't. All right. Are you ready there, big fella? That's problem? right. All right. Losers for the week, NFL edition. The Jacksonville Jaguars, not only do they lose to the Cincinnati Bengals last night yeah. in overtime, 34-31. Great game, McPherson right there with the game-winning kick. But they lose Trevor Lawrence, a.k.a. Rocky Dennis. He is out for at least a week, maybe more, with what looked like a broken ankle. X-ray said it ain't broken, and we'll find out later today. The significance with an MRI of how bad that ankle is. Yes, losers. it's tough. You want to it's, 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 uh, losers. Uh, losers. Thank you. Uh, so the bottom line is, it's not about Trevor Lawrence. They also lost Christian Kirk in this game after the losers. first quarter with a groin injury. So overall, man, this offense for the uh, Jaguars, they're in trouble. They can't protect. They can't run the ball, and they're losing weapons. They uh, by the and minute. And you, as a hair. You went girls. from Jacoby having the number one overall seed. Yep. And and an easy schedule to, oh my God, there's actually a roadmap right. to not even making the playoffs. Yesterday on Yikes. the show, we looked at their schedule, Losers. we looked at the standings, and I said to myself, oh my God, the Jaguars are going to be the number one seed in yeah. the AFC. It was there. And then all it took was Jake Browning and one lineman standing on Trevor Lawrence's ankle, and now they're in jeopardy of being overtaken by the Texans. Yeah, and to be it's fair, I mean, they might have lost with Trevor Lawrence yes, because that was Jake not Browning they lost. was having a great game, exactly. and the Jaguar defense was uh, you know, burnt like toast all night long. So it's why uh, apparently all internet connections, all social media has been shut down in that dump of a city, yeah. Jacksonville, Florida. Losers. 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 Yeah. Oh, your Twitter did <laughs> fired up today. Mm. They're going to light your Twitter up. <laughs> what else is new? <laughs> All right. The Dallas Cowboys, Plaxico Burris, are week 13 winners. Dallas Cowboys sitting back. Obviously, they won the game. They had to win the trap game against Seattle. Good game, of course. Plax uh, Dak Prescott playing great. And then they got to sit at home and watch the Philadelphia Eagles get burnt by San Francisco, meaning this Sunday night's game gives Dallas a shot at being first place in the division. I have to say losers. Why? I got to say losers because the Philadelphia Eagles understand how important this game is. You know, this Sunday night, it's a, it's a must-win game for them if they want the inside track, like Craig just said, yeah. like the, 40, the San Francisco 49ers. Yeah. But the Eagles still have the inside track to be in, be in the number one seed and have home field advantage. So I do not think that the Dallas Cowboys will lose two weeks in a row, especially the division but game. In to the, the Cowboys. moment, you could say that they're winners for the week yeah. because they won and Philly lost. Yeah? No, they're still losers <laughs> to me. 
Oh, yeah. Dallas Cowboys they will got, always be losers to me. The only, no, the only, hey, the only thing that I like in Dallas is uh, Glorious. You know, they have quality <laughs> and DG. food and, um, and uh, margaritas. Shout out to, Shout out to Glorious. They do good margaritas. margaritas. That's for real. All right. You're funny. They'll always, they'll they'll always be losers. All right. Let's go uh, to uh, Orchard Park, New York. The Buffalo Bills. Winners. Didn't even play. The Buffalo Bills are week 13 losers. How? I don't know. That's what it says on the screen. They told me to fall. Uh, the reason that they're losers is because with the Cincinnati Bengals win uh, and the reality that the Bengals have the tiebreaker against the Bills, the Cincinnati Bengals, uh, if they have the same record, are ahead of the Bills, which they are right now, as you can see, getting to 6-6. Six and six. So they're tied with Buffalo, but they have the advantage. That loss by the Jaguars to the Bengals actually hurts the Bills' opportunity to get in as a wild card. Jacksonville probably still wins their division. Not knowing about Trevor Lawrence yet, that could be in play too I don't with know. the Texans. But Cincinnati now, all they got to do is match whatever amount of wins Buffalo gets, and they're in ahead of the Bills. Yeah, it's tough. You feel like the Buffalo Bills are starting to come along, but they keep slipping down that slide. That being said, from Jacksonville through the 12th seed or 11th seed, which is the Bills, the Bills have the best starting quarterback. Yeah. They're, the best team. they're the best team by far of all those. Teams. I wouldn't say by far, by far, but they're certainly in that conversation. I by think that far. the AFC South division is going to be a monster for the rest of the year coming down to the last game. Of Every the game means something. Yeah. You're looking at Indianapolis Colts seven and five, Ooh. Houston seven and five, and now you got the, the uh, Jags sitting at eight and four. And now we're talking about them not even making the playoffs. And by the way, Colts aren't going anywhere. And like every time we kind of scoff at them, and like, ah, oh, Gardner Minshew, you, you know, you got Michael Pittman Jr. popping up, Alex Pierce, hey. Zach Moss. I mean, they're, they're, I, they're I fighting. I this man. ever has happened. The three teams from one division make the playoffs. Yeah, NFC. I mean, there was a chance ago we were yeah, talking yeah, about uh-huh. all four from the AFC North game, uh-huh. which obviously yeah. is not going to happen now. But uh, it has happened a couple times. Uh, real quick, week 13, a winner's getting the dubs. Uh, the Dolphins, the Ravens, and the Chiefs. Why? Because Jacksonville losers <laughs> last night to the Cincinnati Bengals, yeah. meaning that Jacksonville no longer has the inside track on the number one seed. They go to loss number four, so they're tied with Kansas City in that regard, and they're both now sitting there behind the Miami Dolphins and the Baltimore Ravens. Big win yesterday for those AFC playoff teams. Yeah, the Chiefs is the one. I, I got to call losers on the Chiefs. You can't lose to Jordan Love at, in Green Bay. Like, Jordan oh, they're Love pretty was, good right now. Yeah, but Jordan Love looked like the better quarterback, and the Chiefs <laughs> still have the same old issues we've been talking about since week five. So I don't know how the Chiefs are in that little I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm looking at what we're talking about here. Based off of what we saw last night and in, 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 uh, the Chiefs losing to Green Bay, mm-hmm. they're 8-4, and four, and they're still one game out. Of that's right. The yeah. They're one game yeah. out of having the number one seed. That's exactly right. Based off right. of how bad they played. Today. That be, that's why they're winners for this right. week because Jacksonville brought everybody <clears throat> back into the conversation. All right, let's go real fast here. Uh, losers for the week, Trevor Lawrence fantasy owners. Is that fair? If you're a fantasy guy getting ready for your yes, playoffs, that's fair. next week the playoffs start or the week after that. Hard to argue with that. In a lot of leagues, you have Trevor Lawrence as your quarterback. He's out, meaning you're a loser. And the final one, the final winner, NFL-themed winners and losers here on a Tuesday on the Carton Show, Zach Wilson. Big winner this week. Uh-huh. Big winner, Zach Get Wilson. Get out of here. Big winner. As the New York Jets acknowledge yeah. that Zach Wilson is the best quarterback. It's like your ex girlfriend dating around and trying to get back with you. <laughs> Wait, the Jets are so bad at the quarterback position. They literally came to Zach and said, Listen, I know we had a problem. Uh, <laughs> but can we somehow? I went on a couple hinge dates yeah. and uh, I it's saw really, what's out there. Right, it's totally my fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all me. Yeah, yeah. That's bad. Well, I do think at some point later today, worst case tomorrow, uh, the Jets will announce who their starting quarterback is. It has is to be him. It's got to be Texas. him. Who else will it be? And I can't see it being anybody other than Zach Wilson. Yes. That being said, they beat the I Texans. Just start they beat the Texans. They beat the Texans. And at the end of the day, does it really matter? It does. No, they're, not they're gonna score Texas down anyway. Really I'm calling uh, it right now. They're going to beat the Texans. Uh, I'm going to call right now. They don't score a touchdown. <laughs> they're going to beat the Texans. No matter who's playing. It doesn't matter. It really All matter. right, coming up, we got your headlines. Last night was a huge game in the AFC, and somehow, some way, those feisty Cincinnati Bengals with a backup quarterback took care of business against the losers from Jacksonville. Ramifications next on FS1. Standing on business. 
Good morning and welcome to the final stretch of the Carton Show. Last night, Jake Browning was dealing. What? He dealt them all dealing. the way down into field goal range in overtime and got the Bengals the win over the Jaguars. The Jaguars didn't just lose the game. They also lost Trevor Lawrence. How bad was last night for the Jags? It was a uh, worst case scenario for them because they went from controlling the number one seed overall in the AFC to this actually mathematical algorithm you could put together that they don't win another game because they have a backup quarterback in C.J. Beathard. He looked okay last night Bethard. coming in, but the reality is that they're no longer the big dogs. You know, Miami and Baltimore now own the track to the number one seed. And while I do think Jacksonville will probably win the division and still get in, they ain't winning nothing with C.J. Beathard as their quarterback. All due respect, I know he's a good kid and comes from the NFL royalty. Uh, you know, his dad or grandfather was a GM for a very long time, an executive in the NFL and all that jazz. But uh, listen, that was a tragic loss last night for Jacksonville and for Cincinnati. Look, they're not doing anything, obviously, with Jake Browning other than having a great game last night. And at least for their fan base, it keeps their flickering playoff hopes alive, meaning you get another meaningful game yeah. next week and the week after that, etc. But as Plax and I were just talking during the break, last night's game really upset the entire apple cart in the AFC. It did, man. Looking at the Cincinnati Bengals moving forward for the rest of the season, it's a possibility that they can win out. Yeah. Possible. I mean, it's a possibility. I mean, that, Browning plays like he played last night. Right? Like, so tennis Here's why I don't get plaques. You game. guys played, obviously, Jacoby and I didn't. You, you, you're playing for something special. You're playing for the number one seed, a chance to stay at home the entire playoffs and maybe go to a Super Bowl, right? That's not a, that's not a thing that happens all the time for the Jacksonville Jaguars, obviously, right? How do you allow your defense to be shredded by a backup quarterback with all due respect to Jake Browning? I mean, how does that happen? Not even, not even strutted. It was almost like Joe Burrow was playing the game. Right. The ball was peppered around. Dude, they allowed him to throw the ball. My man threw the ball 37 yeah. times last night right. and only had one, two, three, four, five incomplete passes. And Joe Mixon, and Joe Mixon had two touchdowns. That's crazy. I mean, you can say that Zach Taylor has the ultimate confidence in Jake Browning yeah. as far as calling plays in his offense because the offense wasn't scaled yep. back a bit. At all. I mean, it, it was Joe Burrowish last night. And listen, if you just continue to get the ball to Jamal Chase, he's going to be a good idea. Right? Man, he's one of the best. And what's crazy, you know, Jake Browning's made a couple of other appearances this year as we dealt with the Joe Burrow injuries, and it didn't look very good. Right. Like, boy, that offense is dreadful now. You know, they're done. They may not win another game. And then last night on the road to put a 34 burger on what a lot of people thought was maybe the best or second best team yeah. in the AFC was crazy. If you have a backup quarterback, that's what this is what you want your backup yeah. quarterback. To yes. Like. Yes. Yeah, yes, yes. Why are you because, looking at me when you say that? Because, <laughs> because, <laughs> that, that so bring up, tell him up. I'm just don't bring him up. Jake, Jake Brown is a backup back quarterback. <laughs> are, you, oh, are you suggesting this, I don't have one? <laughs> is that what you're suggesting? Hey, the guy starter, I'm a backup. Hey, back back yeah, the guy hasn't played that much, obviously, because Joe Burrow is a franchise quarterback, and he's not going to play a lot moving forward. But if your NFL team looking at what Jake Brown did last night, you're going to try to get the Cincinnati Bengals on the phone after this season and listen. Jake Browning is a starting quarterback on a lot of these teams in the NFL if you look at who they start yeah, quarterbacks but look at, are. Yeah, you're 100% right. Look at the Baltimore Ravens. The kid Huntley? Yeah. I mean, stud. Anytime he stepped in, Balls, right? So if you're a good team, every good team has a good number two. Why are you looking at me when you say that? I'm with you. Huh? I'm on the same yeah. ship hey, with you. Seem like hey, you're on the hey, same this, ship this as me. This is what I've been saying since Aaron Rodgers got hurt years ago when he broke his collarbone. Yeah. I, I believe against the Minnesota Vikings, it became the Aaron Rodgers rule. You can't touch a quarterback. This is why the NFL quarterback position, uh, the backup quarterback, has become one of the most coveted positions in all the yeah. sports. Because sure. If your starting quarterback goes down, now you're looking like the And by the Jets. way, the Bengals are not going to be all that quick to let Jake Browning go if no he plays way. like that another couple games. No. Moving on to a second headline that involves a one-time backup quarterback, also a one-time prediction of Craig's what? that he would be in the MVP conversation. I love it. That's right. And now look at him. Brock Purdy is the favorite yeah. to win the MVP. Do you see it actually coming to fruition? I mean, yeah. funny, there's a lot of people that are referring to me as the football savant. Oh, okay. Uh, um, yeah, FS1's got a big promotional thing coming up. Uh, I, I, I never saw it. Yeah. <laughs> Look, uh, Brock Purdy is the quarterback on the best team in football. Yeah. And if you're talking about the other guys that are in the running 
for MVP. He outplayed Jalen Hurts, so Jalen Hurts can't be MVP. He outplayed Dak Prescott, so Dak Prescott can't be the MVP. Facts. As we discussed earlier, and this is all plaques, and I'm with him on this, how is Lamar Jackson not on that list? That's all. And if, by the way, you want to add Tyreek Hill as well? Because you might have a record setting here yep. for wide receivers. I would respect that also. Brock Purdy, to me, is the favorite. But Lamar Jackson's got to be on that list as well. Yeah, but I think we can't underestimate what Brock Purdy has done this far, especially in that game. You're talking about throwing for 314 yards, four touchdowns. He didn't throw for 314 yards. What are you, yards. What are you talking about? What, it's in what, the stat I, sheet. Well, I don't know why you, the man leads the league in completion. <laughs> First of all, MVP is a beauty pageant, right? It's a beauty contest. At right. the end of the day, he, he, Mr. Irrelevant is now relevant solely because of what he does with the football in his hand. 19 for 20s, 19 for 27. You're talking about 314 yards, four touchdowns. Yeah. What else do you want the man to do? He, he went to Philly in the rain and beat the Philadelphia Eagles at home. Yeah. Came off the plane Plax. in all black. And What's up? To be fair, Plax, your big question mark about Brock Purdy was, can he play in cold weather games Done. outside? Answer he that. He just proved that he can. It wasn't cold enough. <laughs> oh, I like it. I like great take. Great take. Not cold enough. But look, I'm being told that Lamar Jackson, I, this may mean nothing to anybody, but he's plus 900. So right now, three times as likely to win the MVP, Brock Purdy is right. over Lamar Jackson. Good and I'm a plaque. To me, I think it's a two-headed race. I think it's in the NFC, it's Brock Purdy. In the AFC, it's Lamar Jackson. Uh, I say that with can, all can due we, respect to Tyler. Hold on, hold on. In a world. For the Baltimore Ravens, can we pull up the schedule? Uh, I'm you guys sure have the schedule there? Yeah. But we have it, sure. that in a world in which Tua breaks the record and the Dolphins have the best record in the I'm AFC, you, right? I could see Tua being the Tua MVP. Too, well, yeah. then Tua becomes the AFC <sighs> pick over Lamar Jackson, but. You also have to consider what Brock Purdy does. Right. If San Francisco rallies, don't put up. Oh, that's fine. If San Francisco rallies and they do get the number one seed in the NFC, right? Mm -hmm. Baltimore would have to do the same thing for Lamar Jackson to continue to get votes. Well, Dolphins could do the same thing. And Tua could break a, I mean, yeah, Tyreek could break a record. I, I think more people would look at Tyreek as the That's MVP what I'm saying. I misspoke. Tyreek breaks the record. Yeah. But you can't say that because they lead the league in rushing. You have Waddle. Like, yeah. they have pieces. It's not like it's just solely the Cheetah and Tua. Yes, that's yeah, a big but, one to come. Hey, but Tua did come out and say you know, they're looking to do something special. If Tyreek Hill does eclipse this mark of 2,000 yards, he breaks that, the that record. is something very and special. They have the, and they have the number one yeah. seed. I yesterday. think that Tyreek could be the MVP. Look, I also think the conversation that people will start having is, all right, eliminate the candidate from the team that they're on. So people are going to say, take Tyreek Hill off the Dolphins. What's the Dolphins' record? It ain't what it is. No, but no. to be fair, take Lamar Jackson off Baltimore. Take Brock Purdy off San Francisco. Take two out of Miami. Right. It's the same, yeah, same yeah, exact hey, conversation. What's in a few weeks? Everybody has Brock Purdy slated to win the MVP this, uh, MVP mm -hmm. this year. If Baltimore can go to San Francisco right. and the Baltimore Ravens find a way That's to win that point. football game, then everything changes. That game might be not just for who has the number one seed in their oh, like conferences. That could be what we like, like to call it. on here. The MVP Bowl. Oh, Trademark it. The Carton da, Show. You heard it first. The da, MVP da, Bowl. Da, 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 da. MVP Ba 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 bowl like that. Something like that. Oh, that's no, worse. That's yeah. how I did. Yeah. Well, that's that's we'll just how, we'll how it goes. <laughs> Moving on to our final headline: Cowboys head coach Mike McCarthy spoke about the intensity of the Eagles Cowboys rivalry in advance of the big game on Sunday. Yes. Here is Mike McCarthy. Huge. This is an excellent opportunity oh, for us to leader. play in playoff type games without you know without playoff consequences, and I think that serves Wrong. very well. Uh, because December football is something that you know, I've personally, I've always enjoyed. Uh, I think it's a it's a great indication of, of where you are as a team and and what you need to um, obviously do to get into the playoffs and be ready for the playoffs. So uh, we're looking for. I mean, it's it's the Cowboys and the Eagles. I don't think you have to say anything more than that. Well, that's right. He's fired up. Will the game live up to the hype? And why do you think he's wrong? Well, he's wrong because this has major playoff implications. If the Dallas Cowboys lose this game, the best that they can be is the five seed. Period. Stop. Number one's off the table. Two's off the table. Three's off the table. Four's off the table because those are all division winners. So if they drop to 10 and 4, uh, 9 and 4 rather, and Philly goes to 11 and 2, it's a wrap. You're three games back with four games to play. You're not winning the division, meaning the best you can be is the number one wild card team. So this has uh, Mike McCarthy's just dead wrong, and maybe he's trying to convince his teams don't get too amped up, don't put too much into this game. Why not? You better put too much into yeah, this game exactly. everything. because this isn't just Philly Dallas. This is revenge, and this is a chance to win the division 
and stay alive for the number one seed. If they lose this game, they're the five seed, and that's the best they can be. This has major playoff yeah. implications. Mike McCarthy's just wrong. And if you're Mike McCarthy, like you're playing your best football right now. Like talk life into your ball club. The Eagles are wounded. They're coming off a bad loss against the Niners at home. If I'm if I'm anything, if I'm Mike McCarthy, like we got them right where we want them. Not just Let's that. go win it. You're the best home team in football. Yeah. Right. What's yeah. your 14 straight 14 home straight wins in a row, yeah. for the Dallas Cowboys? And oh, by the way. Granted, against much lesser competition, 40 points every single game the last month you played at home. Yeah. Yeah. This is everything okay. for the Dallas yeah. Cowboys. I just don't know uh, how a head coach can get up uh, on a, po a podium with games of this magnitude and say that this game doesn't have any playoff. Right. right. That's just totally wrong. Sounds like he's nervous. Right. 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 Now, <laughs> I understand he's right at the end when he says, look, it's Philly-Dallas. That's all you got to say. But he couldn't be more uh, tone deaf yeah. and off on the importance of this game. This game gives the Cowboys the opportunity to have a home playoff game. If they lose this game, they cannot have a home playoff game. This game may cost him his job. <laughs> this game could about? also <laughs> cost him his job. Also, Philly's going to be motivated. I mean, you talk about the city Philly doing right now. I got a picture to show you. This is how motivated Philly is. They're yeah. going to be pumped up. They're selling Dom t-shirts. Oh, big Dom. Oh, big Dom, Dom. t-shirts. A flying off the rack. Only $16? That's a deal. Big Dom, get your royalty, baby. Like, they're going in and coming up the plane. Like, the Niners take it all black. The Eagles are coming in. Oh, Wait, why is it coming 35 colors? Look at all those colors that come to Because in. Dom's the one selling it. <laughs> hey, 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 Dom also had an Italian flag on the side yeah. of it. I like yeah. it. Like, Philly's uh, coming to win. Yeah. So you better get ready. Is there, there's a part of me that feels like because they got dominated by the Niners that they're oh, going to be ready to play. They're going to be ready, more ready to play no. against the Dallas Cowboys. I, don't buy, I feel I don't like they'll be that. more fired be. up, more I ready can. to prove to the world that's not who they were. No question. You I tell me, with be. all the smack talk last week, you don't think Philly went into the San Francisco game the way you guys think they're now going to go into the Dallas game? They came into last week's game the same exact way. Got to win this game. Yo, San Fran's boo-hoo-hooing and crying about the NFC Championship game. We'll take them on. Our building, our crowd. Yo, we want all that smoke, all the nonsense. And they lost and got manhandled along the way yes. in an embarrassing loss at home, giving up a 40-burger. Yes. They're going to be more motivated? I believe right. so. Absolutely. I'll tell you why. How can you be they more motivated? They will not get embarrassed two weeks in a row. They won't it's, it's not it's on the, the makeup, table. It's not the makeup of a football team, especially a, 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 a Super Bowl contender yeah. football team. I'm going to tell you why. The reason it's not going to happen because their identity is at question, right? You're talking about going against a Niner team who pretty much bullied them like we talked about put up points, and you got your best outside linebacker. You got your security got thrown out the building. Your own yeah. security. I would you got be more up in all three categories. I'd be more concerned if I'm an Eagle fan on the overall health of my quarterback because he did leave the game and he'll came be, back in. I'm sure he's going to play and all that, but I'm not sure where he's at with the knee. Uh, obviously, obviously, potential concussion last week as well. But look, I, I don't know. You guys, it's funny to me. The Eagles – know how to win. We've given them a lot of credit for that all year. Even when they don't play their best football, they figure out a way to pull out a win or the other team makes a mistake that they don't make and they walk, uh, they go home, you know, as winners and they were 10-1 and one, it was all good. Now you're going to get a sense of who they are because they lose a game that all of America's watching, right? And they embarrass themselves and the nonsense on the sidelines of part of it, all that. But then you have the same level of game the very next week against a bigger rival mm -hmm. than San Francisco is. What happens when the Eagles get smoked again? Ooh. Then what do we say about I, it? I don't, I don't think so. I think, I think from a defensive standpoint for the Eagles, I, I don't think the Dallas Cowboys <coughs> compare to the 40, uh, uh, San Francisco 49ers offensively. I mean, you, I agree with you, that. You, you look at what they did to the Eagles last week. Uh, I haven't seen, seen, seen that kind of Well, they don't have Christian McCaffrey in that running. Right, the right, right. So I, I think for the Philadelphia Eagles, a bounce back game for them uh, uh, defensively. Because here's what you'll hear, Plax, and I guarantee it. If things go bad for the Eagles, I don't care how they lose the game, but they lose the game. And now, obviously, San Francisco's got a better shot of being Ooh. the number one seed. And people are going to start crying about the sky is falling in Philadelphia. To be fair, throw the Eagles' schedule up there right quick. The Eagles can absorb another loss. Yeah, they can. Because but can Seattle, they, Craig? They can. Here's they can. why. Look at this. Seattle schedule. represents the only test they have left. Okay. And Seattle's fighting for a playoff berth. So, yeah, at Seattle, that will not be an easy game for Philly. But they ended with win, win, win. Yeah. It's and, 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 the the and the $40 have to win out. Yes. They have to but win I, out. But I get all that. But I mean, from a team aspect, you're talking about loss against the Niners, loss against the Cowboys, possibly a loss against the Seahawks. 
and you want to try to make up feeling better for yourselves against an outfit who doesn't even, not even great. It's it's just about doing what you got to do to get that seed. If you can, and right. what Plax is saying is right. San Francisco would essentially have to win out. They win out. Philadelphia has a lock three wins to end the season. They ain't losing to the Giants, no yeah. disrespect. And you know they're not losing to the Cardinals. But beating the Giants doesn't change my morale. Like, I want to feel good beating the best. Yeah, but if you're sitting there with the number one seed, yeah. your morale's pretty damn yeah, good. Yeah. That's, why, that's why I said for the Eagles, for the next four, the next two weeks, their, their focus has to be at all time. But right, they get these deals for the next two weeks, man, the last three games are cake. I'm, I'm with you on that, but my point is you're going to go into the playoffs possibly seeing the Cowboys and Niners yeah and you lose right. at the end of the season like that doesn't make me feel good well Philly's like, gonna go into the playoffs winning three in a row minimum maybe four right if they're the number one seed going into the last week of the yeah, season but I, but they I, do not but put the anybody on the field against the Giants I get that with the Philadelphia Eagles are we not expected to beat the Giants and the, uh, and the Cardinals like yeah. that's easy money I want to beat the big dogs and go into the playoffs like yeah I, I think it was their best shot yeah but I think you guys can speak to it better than we can I think once you get to the postseason it's a restart right Especially sure. if you go in winning three in a row. Whether you get the bye or not, you're going to feel better about yourselves because you took care of business the last three weeks. I feel better about myself about beating Dallas and Dallas. Yeah, by and the way, that's the goal. There's another thing here. Take a look at the Cowboys schedule. We just talked about how easy it is for the Eagles down the stretch. The Cowboys schedule, not, that's not easy. easy at all. Yeah, I mean, look at, look at that. I mean, the Cowboys have one guaranteed W on the schedule. That's the last game of the year, and it might not mean nothing. Right? Philly's tough. Buffalo's tough at Buffalo. Weather at Miami, maybe the best team in the they AFC. Beat Detroit. Detroit, who knows? Yes. I mean, it's a possibility if the Dallas Cowboys lose this weekend, they could lose another two football games. Absolutely right. Oh, Absolutely yeah. right. But I'll tell you what, there's going to be a lot of games where we come in and go, this is the biggest game of the <laughs> year. Big game of the year. <laughs> this is the biggest game, game of the year. year. Anyhow, we're going to do better tomorrow, so if you'll join us.